And now we are going to have a quick interview with some of the Kingdom Hearts runners and community. Hello, this is Freda. I'm here with Jay Hobbs, Bizkit, at Zero, and Spike Vegeta. Uh, we are here to interview these guys for the Kingdom Hearts block coming up in the next six hours. So uh, both of you actually run at a marathon, at this marathon in the past. Uh, you last, or Biz last year, and at Zero the year before. Mm -hmm. How's it feel being invited back for a second go-around? It always feels awesome. I feel like this marathon is very good to our community, so mm -hmm. it's always great to come back every year like this. Yeah, it's always nice getting another chance to show off the game. Uh, it's just unfortunate that the other runner for my game in particular wasn't able to make it, so... Yeah, yeah so yeah. sorry yeah. for Sonic, who isn't here tonight. Yeah, I couldn't quite do it as a race. But. Yeah, special shout-outs to Sonic Shadow Silver, too, has been a great part of our community over the years. And again, was supposed to be racing Adam in uh, Birth by Sleep Tonight, and uh, has given a lot to our community over the years. But, uh, yeah, at zero over here, he's, uh, he's going to represent it well. Good, good. So first we have the Kingdom Hearts 1 FM, is it level 1 critical, I believe, right? Level 1 level proud. One proud. Level 1 no proud, crit. sorry. Well, Thankfully, well, critical is not a thing critical. in that game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how does that differ from your category from last year? Well, it's an entirely different game. Instead of 2 FM, it's 1 FM now. And level 1's new to the PS3 and PS4 versions of the game. So it's kind of unique, and it's never been done at a marathon before. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see it because it's, uh, it's actually never been shown at a major marathon just in general, level one. Uh, and it's a little bit jankier, kind of the way they went back because they did it first for Cage 2. And then found out, oh, that was kind of cool for casual play and crazy speedrunners to do in a couple hours. So uh, they're bringing it back. They kind of implemented it into Cage 1. So it'll be interesting to see how they worked their way through it. Okay, uh, I know there's, it uh, sounds like recently all of the uh, incentives for KH1 has been met, mm -hmm. courtesy of probably the Yeti, Whoa, I imagine. Really? Yeah, yeah, wow. this just happened at the end of the last run, so you've been doing all of those. Are you ready for them? Yes. <laughs> Good, <yeah. laughs> no, no question. <laughs> I'm going to call him out on it. He was practicing a fight that's in his game <laughs> that even he's not going to be fighting later on, so not to call you out, but I called you out, so it's all right. Oh, awesome. Okay, so if you guys didn't hear that, uh, the Oathbound fight is gonna be, has gone for all the Earthbound runners' Oathkeeper. choice. Yeah, so yeah, Earthbound. <laughs> oh, sorry, Oathbound. <laughs> I like that would it. be yeah, awesome. I, like Keeper, cool. Oath... I want that Keyblade. He's really the gatekeeper. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, the Oathkeeper is going to be actually a glitch cutscene. It's going to be really cool. Yeah. Um, I hadn't seen it at all. Spike <laughs> still hasn't seen it. They <laughs> made me leave the room. Yeah. I had to go outside in the cold just to let the joke still land. So we can get so. a genuine reaction from Spike Vegeta. It'll, it'll be great. Yeah. That should be fun. Yeah. I say we also have for Birth by Sleep a uh, popular bid war returning from the first year of mm -hmm. Aqua or Ventus or Terra, and mm -hmm. I believe t uh, I believe Aqua is still winning. Uh, Terra, 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 Terra is still winning. Terra is yes. rocking about a two hundred and fifty dollar lead, but I just want to know, guys, the cage community, you guys are loud and you're proud. If you want, <laughs> I mean, if you want Aqua, that can certainly still happen. Ventus, even that can still happen. I want to see Ven. Really, not that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go down the couch. I think this, I want to see one, a which one do you guys want to see, war. and which one would you like to play? Let's, let's go down the couch. Okay. Uh, I, I think I want to see Ventus. I, that's the one that I've personally run myself in the past, too. And it's it's got a lot of different strats and stuff. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. It's got a bunch of varied ways to do a lot of damage. And uh, I know Adam doesn't want to run it. so. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you say Terra during the pre-show, then? <laughs> oh, because I was misinformed. I thought that was the one. <laughs> what a flip-flopper. <laughs> I would have to go with Ven. It's Ooh. definitely evolved a lot over the last uh, two years to use EXP Zero much more efficiently than Terra. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I would say Aqua, uh, <laughs> since I seem to be the only member of the cage community that still wants to play Aqua. Everyone else <laughs> wants Ven. Uh, but uh, second would be Ven, third would be Terra. Mm -hmm. And just to defend Terra a little bit, um, I, the one thing exciting about him is that he has kind of a final boss gauntlet. And uh, he doesn't get as overpowered abilities to be able to take them out. So if you want to see the final four bosses all uh, be really scary for this guy to have to take on, especially the final boss, uh, that could be something exciting as well. But I think they're all, I mean, they're all sub hour categories. Make sure you stick around for them. It's all good stuff. Okay, uh, we'll do one last chance. Give you guys some shout outs. 
shout outs to all the people who are going to do- uh, donate for Ventus. <laughs> 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 I like seeing the underdog story. That's always my big thing. Mm-hmm. And so I, I want to see that just come back and outshine everyone else. All right. Yeah, give shout outs to everyone who supports our community yep. and found all the strats for all our routes and such. And just to reiterate from Olio, uh, Sonic, who wasn't able to make it tonight, and all the other BBS runners have helped make the routes what they are today. Shout out to RPG Limit Break for just uh, showing us a lot of love over the years. We've had primetime slot after primetime slot. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was looking at a religion. He was going to be like, wrap it up. But he was sending me a heart. <laughs> as long as he doesn't go behind the table, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's not allowed back there this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to let someone um, else do it. But, yeah, thank you to them for all the love always. Um, I'm, I'm seeing that number up there. It's, like, close to 81,000. I know we've already broken our mark from last year. I want to see 100,000 tonight, like, oh, yeah. by the end of the cage block. I know you guys can do it. This bud board is going to get hot. Let's go. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Yeah. Well. Biz, I believe you're up. Do the cage yep. community proud. I'll do my best. <laughs> thank you, Freddie. Yeah, thank you. All right, awesome interview, hyping up the next two runs. Like they said, there is a bid war for the characters, and just to remind you, uh, Terra is sitting at 641, Aqua at 418, and Ventus at 65. And I also root for the underdog, so I'm hoping Ventus makes it. (laughs) From the... Last run, Earthbound, we had a $60 donation from Cauldrim, who said, Hey, guys, I haven't donated much this event, so I'll throw in more than I normally do. Also, where's Waldo percent was amazing. It sure was. We need more. Anyway, I'll let the 12 runners split this and decide where it goes. And we got that all figured out. Most of the runners put all of their choices towards the Kingdom Hearts incentives to get those met. So big ups to those guys. We have a $5 donation from Lin Fang, who just says, five for the box TVs. CRT TVs are awesome indeed. We have a $10 donation from Earthbound Ian, who says, yo biz, glad I can donate during your run. Good luck, man. I'll let you decide where the money goes. And just to remind you guys, we did have a long Earthbound run before. If any of you guys are unsure about what we're doing, we are RPG Limit Break 2017 here in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we are raising money for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. This is especially important this month as May, as it is every month, but May is Mental Health Month. And if you want to join the conversation, you can using the hashtag Mental Health Month or hashtag stigma free on Twitter. And NAMI is an awesome foundation. If you are feeling any kind of uncertainty or anxiety or depression, you can communicate with NAMI at NAMI communicate on Twitter or by using the hashtags I mentioned before, they will reach out to you.
We have a $10 donation from Anonymous who says, Hey, Biz, always a pleasure to see you run at a KH at a marathon. Excuse me. Here's hoping you get to break the Oath Keeper cutscene. And I know for a long time there weren't really glitches or anything in Kingdom Hearts games, so it's pretty recent that a lot of them have been found out. Yeah, in case Spike, Spike's mic isn't on stream at the moment, he just pointed out that we are just about there at the Oathkeeper cutscene. All right, and I think we are all ready to go over here, so if you want to give us a countdown, Biz, we will get going. From five. All right, so let me select the settings first. Oh, a manual man. I appreciate a manual all right, man. Five, yeah. four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Woo! All right. All right. And as is tradition with Kingdom Hearts 1.5 runs, we can now go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, unfortunately, in every single version of Kingdom Hearts 1, we can never skip this opening cutscene, which I'm sure a lot of viewers are glad we can't. But <laughs> for us runners, it's kind of annoying. Get ready for that VOD to be muted. <laughs> so, do yes. you want to, like, talk a lot during this bit? <laughs> I'll, I'll explain a couple things, I guess. So, this is 1FM, and it's the PS4 version that just came out a couple months ago. We are running it because it is the fastest version by far. Oh, yeah. It's at least uh, around, it's around 30 minutes, I think, faster than the PS3 version. And uh, it's... It's pretty much a little bit stable, but I did crash pretty early in practice the other day, so we're going to hope that doesn't happen. Cause Which we'll we're be totally not again. rooting for. <laughs> I'm also playing in English, even though it's uh, about 20 seconds slower, because uh, they just really wanted the English version, and I don't mind only being 20 seconds slower. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus, English has a pretty cool uh, glitch, one of the very few mm -hmm. in Kingdom Hearts speedrunning. That, uh, that we're going to get to show off later, which is pretty nice. Yeah, exclusive to it. And says also just kind of breaks up one part of the game, which again, we'll get to. You want to talk about Biz also, what category you're playing on? Oh, yeah, so I am on Proud Mode, which is the highest difficulty that uh, 1FM has to offer. However, they added in a new ability in 1.5 for the PS3 and PS4, which is EXP0, <clears throat> which you might know from other Kingdom Hearts games that they started throwing it in. This one, they kind of put it in after those, and it's only available on Proud Mode, and it will stop me from gaining any experience for anything. Yeah. What's funny is he's actually going to gain some experience first, <laughs> because there are a right. few fights before you can open the menu, but he'll still be at level one based on uh, some of the questions we answer at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, party members, a couple of them will not be level one, but uh, there's nothing I can really do about that without wasting a lot of time trying to exploit the spawning. so we're just going to roll with that, because Sora will be level one. 
Goff is going to be that really overpowered level two yeah. all throughout the course of this run. What a jerk. In yeah. a normal run, we get to 50, so <laughs> I think it's okay. So, yeah. It's amazing the amount of optimization, though, there has been for this category over the years. Because I know when you were first running it, this it was so slow. Everything you had to play was so safe. Uh, and now it's to the point where proud mode ideally is like maybe 10 to 15 minutes at most slower than like regular proud yes. where we're gaining will normally be like level 42 by the end of it. So it kind of shows all the research that you guys have done over the years to optimize this category and get it to where you're not losing as much time as you think. Again, there's a lot of quirks with level one that you're going to be seeing throughout it. That'll be uh, pretty mind blowing once we get there. Again, first time this uh, category level one proud has been shown at a GD or at a at a major marathon. All right, so. so I have to choose my weapon and drop a weapon, which is pretty <clears throat> standard for Kingdom Hearts one and two. Uh, for this game on level one, we definitely want to pick the staff because it gives us one extra MP, and this is because of the way the game is going to scale with EXP zero equipped, so that my strength and defense won't matter very shortly into the game, but that extra MP will power up my magic and summons because that's what the uh, strength of them is tied to is your amount of MP. So I'm going to be picking that and I'm going to be dropping shield because the defense won't really matter. And it will also let me death abuse a little bit easier early on. Now nah, let's call it for the challenge. You know, <laughs> he's, he's dropping the shield because level one wasn't hard enough. <laughs> we don't need that defense. <laughs> and yeah. now I'm going to drop the shield. Yeah. Strength is nice to have too early on, even though it gets scaled out pretty fast. Ordinarily, in a proud mode run, you would pick up the sword, and in a beginner mode run, you would pick up the staff. And both both of those are a little bit for the stats that they give, but mainly for the uh, abilities that you get as you level up. But obviously, we're not going to be leveling up, so in this case, it's just for that MP, uh, like Biz said. Here's a little tutorial on how to attack. Uh, I'm going to do some pretty weird movement to position myself for both of these parts. To note, um, kind of basic mechanics of this game, if you haven't seen it before, you'll see that in the bottom left corner of the screen, whenever he's in combat, there's a command deck there. Or command, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what you call it, but uh, there are four kind of different uh, moves he can do. It's almost like your your attack, magic items, you know, all, all that that you could do in like a turn-based RPG. Um, but it's all done in real time, and he has to select those with the D-pad. And right now, all he can do is an attack and use triangle to examine things, but we'll be getting more fairly shortly. It's just for really interesting combat because you're using almost every button on the PS2, 3, 4 controller, whatever you're playing on. So you have to find some pretty interesting hand grips in order to play this game at a very high level. All right, so uh, coming up here, we got shout outs to the round box. <laughs> Which that is not as easy as it looks. You want to explain a little bit about air combos and how they can be trickier than it looks? Uh, yeah, air combos are definitely faster, but you have to mash them out pretty heavily to be able to uh, do them effectively or you'll just land on the ground. Also, here I'm picking all these bottom options. This determines your leveling route, and even though I'm level 1, I need to pick the night route so that I don't level up before I can equip EXP 0. And you'll, you only need to pick two out of the three options to get the route, so hopefully I chose night route. <laughs> yeah, it looked like night route. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, because there's one more forced fight before you can actually open the menu. There's a way to open the menu in that fight, but it takes a really long time. And because, like Biz said, those questions are only, mat only matter oh, for your level. Uh, by the way, this is where I crashed the other day. <laughs> yeah. So let's pray for not that. Not trusting my fingers for it. Not to Shadows, uh, <laughs> Shadows 2 is a notoriously dumb fight, by the way. Shadows are one of the worst enemies in most Kingdom Hearts games. And... Uh, you can kind of see why here. They can go underground and just spread out. It's really awful, but that wasn't too bad, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That little hop he did at the end was just to get as far as he could before he lost control of Sora, getting as close as he could to the save point as possible. And we didn't crash. Hey! Yeah. Nice. Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> so just I, a couple hours to go. <laughs> I just equipped EXP 0, so now I will be level 1 for the rest of the run for sure. I also changed my camera because I hate this version's default camera. It's yeah, they it switched for it me. for PS4, which it, Adam back here loves. It's because it was wrong in, in all the other games, apparently, and so they fixed it in PS4, but they took that long to fix it. Oh, by the way, you can die in this fight, and it is uh, worth it because yeah. it's actually faster. He does want two jump moves from the shadows there, and that was hey. perfect. perfect that was perfect death on your part. I know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, really there's, a handful of fights. there's a handful of fights here in the early part of the game where the game will just progress you. Even some mini games, actually, where it will just progress you on death. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. And he's always, if you skip the cutscene, he's always going to start with punching into the ground, which does half your health. All right, so here, uh, these two days, we're going to be on, or I guess technically three days, we're going to be on Destiny Islands. First days, we're just going to be collecting a bunch of stuff. Uh, one thing that's a little weird about the PS4 version is that a lot of the physics just changed. So right yeah. there in the PS3 version, like we and the other versions as well, we could have like done a little jump up there, but uh, that's just kind of one example of like we had to throw that barrel up there and then jump up instead. Yeah, so it wastes a few seconds. Oh well. The Rip Toji Hop. The platforming in Cage One is a bit janky to say the least, but it is pretty consistent to do the same thing every time. So you can really get used to it, even though it has its pretty bad quirks to get around. So here we're just going to be picking up our last log, and then we'll have a couple of cutscenes. If uh, Nick, if you want to read a couple donations. Yeah, speaking of the physics, we have a $10.69 donation from DJ Salty Nut 62 saying, Sup, guys, sorry I wasn't able go to go to RPGLB. Good luck on the run, Biz. Hopefully you don't get stuck at final rest, or even worse, the game randomly crashes. <laughs> and remember your Sora physics. We have a $10 donation from... Lamel Cage 2 had to support Biz and the Cage community. I've learned so much from guys like Biz and had to give back to support such an awesome cause. As someone who is pursuing a career in medicine, I really appreciate what RPG Limit Break stands for. Good luck to you, Biz. Hope you get hook shit first try and hope the Whiff Master Sora doesn't mess you up. <laughs> I guess to note about some cutscene skips, some of them can't be skipped as fast as you would think, so if it looks like I'm waiting a long time, it's because I can't skip them that fast. Yeah, usually it, it's uh, based around when the game kind of like fully loads the seed in. Seed right. in so. Also, if you ever hear any of us kind of like cough or clear their throats or anything like that. We're pretty much all sick. Yeah, so. we all got kind of <laughs> screwed over here. <laughs> so just bear with us. We're all sharing the same room. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, here on day two, there's quite a bit more uh, just objects you're having to collect in order to get off the island. A couple mushrooms, a bottle of water, some coconuts. Uh, we're just clearing out this side of the island first, so we don't have to come back here later. The only reason why we have to talk to Kyrie later on is so she can give us the bottle to put water in it. So That one bottle of water for that long trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, otherwise the routing would be quite a bit different. This is awkward. <laughs> Where are we? One of the uh, kind of few things you can do to try to optimize things uh, in Destiny Islands is uh, jumping actually can cause some kind of lag frames when you fall and you're just a little bit slow in the air in general. So you'll notice that most of the time Biz will try to run off of ledges <coughs> instead of jump off them or try to jump multiple times in a row sometimes very quickly to cancel out the landing animation a bit. Very minor things, but they add up over the entire course of the run. Yeah. So right here, we're going to be doing the race with Riku. Uh, we actually do want to win this race, and it's actually faster. So in old strat, you would just drop down into the water there on the right, and just take a very boring straight line path up there. But instead, we're using zip line strats. Uh, he's using just the fall down and hop up method to get a high grab on that ladder, and then ride the zip line down. Whee! Yeah. And then he's going to go across these trees. This platforming is a lot harder than it looks. Just simply moving Sora across these trees, you can fall off of them very easily. It is possible to even, like, infinite hover on the trees yeah. if yeah. you just miss a little <laughs> bit. Of, yeah. Sora can freak out a little bit on those trees, but this yeah. is able to handle it pretty well. And there, there's only so much time you can save in this fight. Riku has to get close enough to the end before the fight, the, uh, the fight, the mm. race will end. I, so, I, I consider it a fight. I don't know about you. <laughs> because the, uh, he didn't fade out as soon as he jumped on the platform there, we know that he saved all the time he needed to save. Yeah. All right, so coming up is uh, our favorite part of Destiny Islands, uh, coconut RNG. Yeah. Uh, you want to get ripe coconuts. Uh, you need to get two of them. Fun fact, when I was a kid, I thought it was three, so I wasted a lot of time on it. But, um, yeah, you need to get two coconuts here, and it's completely random. It seems like it's maybe about a 50-50 shot or so, maybe a little less that's going to drop them. He only wants to do two hits here on the PS4 version because they despawn a lot faster. So he has to one. check behind the tree, yeah. too, just in case because of the camera angle. He might not be able to see one drop behind the tree. Yeah, that's one of those things where not only can the randomness just kind of mess with you, but it's just an awkward area to try to have to, you know, see things behind the tree or change your lock on and stuff like that. So nobody's too fond of that <laughs> that tree that we have to deal with there, but those it's, coconut drops were fine. It generally, you're not losing that much time unless that tree just straight up runs out of coconuts and you have to go to the second tree, and that is... You might as well just hit that reset button. BBS <laughs> runner at zero right behind me had to go to like three or four trees once. 
What a great game. Yeah. All right, well, moving on. So that's it. Again, we had to talk to her the one time just to get that bottle to fill it up with water. When we come back to Sora, we're going to be uh, fighting our first major boss of the game. If you've got a quick donation, you want to get in real quick, Nick? Yeah, we have a $5 donation from Earthbound Ian. Had to donate again. The KH speedrunning community has been like a family to me. You all are amazing, and thanks for helping me in life. Spike gets to choose where this goes. Good luck to Biz and Adam on your runs. You know where to send it. Ooh, I'm going to send it to Ventus. I'm going to send it to Ventus. <laughs> We're going to make this a three-horse race, man. I'm a force <laughs> yeah. Adam behind us is like, come on, man. man. I thought we talked about this. <laughs> yeah, so now the game wants you to try to fight these shadows, but you have a wooden sword. You can't fight the shadows. They're magic or darkness or something. So sure. you can't really do anything about it um, until you go and pick up the main weapon of the game, the Keyblade, which uh, you'll be physically grabbing right here from this cutscene. And now he could attack the shadows, but there's not really any point because he wouldn't get any experience anyways. And we wouldn't do it on any other diff difficulty either. Mm -hmm. We're going to go straight to the first like real boss. And it's actually a little scary on level one because I have to get a bunch of parries and I get two shotted this early. So yeah, I have this, to be pretty careful. This is a really cool strat. Uh, I believe developed by Terizzle, a community member of ours. Yeah, for standard mode. Uh, for standard, actually, which yeah. is a category that's run, even though it's the medium difficulty. So he's going to move to the right side, get in a full air combo right here, and then he's going to move back. You're going to no notice out of Darkseid's chest, I don't know why I'm pointing out, but out of his chest, he's shooting these orbs. So he's timing a few empty air hits, not finishing the combo, to time his like finisher to hit those orbs into the arm. Um, unfortunately, got hit right there. Probably won't get the super early quick kill. Yeah, oh, so that was like close. one or two hits. Away. Yeah, he, so he should get the quick kill, the normal quick kill there. Yeah, that one hit. One hit. That was, that was still, a good yeah. fight though. He got almost every parry. Yeah, and uh, and also got some crits, I believe, in that fight. So that was just a really, really good fight. Yeah, the uh, it's a little bit random on that last one because there's two lasers that come at once, and sometimes the second one just hits you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so you you try to get the double there, but it's pretty tight timing to actually get because you know. The orbs are going off screen and then coming around. You're trying to time hits off of that. But. So now right. we're not in an island anymore. Cool. <laughs> we're in uh, we're Traverse town. town. This is kind of more or less your hub world. This is uh, you know the, the town that wayward travelers show up at. And uh, the game normally expects you to kind of explore around for a while. It turns out that the way that it determines that you've explored enough is by killing five shadows. Now, this fight's actually really scary on level one, as we're going to say pretty much the whole run. You do want to get hit once, though, because after this, we're going to be fight. We're going to be fighting Leon, and you actually want to die against Leon, mm -hmm. so it's faster if you. There you go. Yeah, faster if you already have damage. Done. He could take one more, but uh, it's probably just faster. Yeah, it's this safer point, to just hopefully the fireball. Yeah. Yep, so now that he's killed the shadows, he's going to be able to walk into the accessory shop here and talk to Sid, a uh, popular Final Fantasy dude. Yep. And uh, when he comes out, he'll actually get into a fight with Leon, which, if you hadn't killed five shadows yet, wouldn't happen. Uh, that fight, Leon can either jump at you or throw a fireball to begin with. And as Kiwi mentioned, we're going to be dying to that fight. So you definitely want that fireball because it'll be a bit faster. Oh, baby. Nice. nice. Perfect. Now, oh, good job. First of all, yeah, that was great. Fun fact about that fireball, if you just stand still, he whiffs. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to either move to the left or move forward or something, because Leon, he, he can't see very well. This is so. one of those cutscenes where you actually have to wait for Riku to open his eyes, because mm. for some reason you can't skip it fast yeah. enough. Yeah, and it's fun. a 1FM exclusive cutscene, too, as well. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Now he is uh, going to be heading over to Guard Armor, which is mm -hmm. kind of the you know, main boss of Traverse Town. I assume you'll be grabbing this elixir yes. here. So yeah. he has Basically to every elixir throughout yeah. the game. It's kind of crazy they give you one right here. Yeah, whatever's like kind of directly in my path. Also, I load up on potions here because I do need it for safety. Mm -hmm. And even then, I could still die. But Yeah, he got one potion early on, uh, dropping his inventory during the tutorial area, and then he has uh, two high potions as well. And yeah, as we said, you could die in most fights in this run. And Guard Armor is one that is incredibly easy to do so in, especially because you can t potentially take a hit before it even starts. And so just having those potions in for safety is a fantastic idea. We don't have Cure yet either, and we're going to try and get that as soon as we can, but... 
Yeah, the rough thing about potions over cures is that in Cage 1, you have to watch the entire animation of Sora throwing them up in the air, so it takes a while. For this uh, fight with the six or seven soldiers here, whatever it is, um, Donald is actually your MVP. You just heard him shoot off the fire there. It instantly one shots. You see it right there. It's on display. You want that duck to do some work right here, because yeah, you otherwise you're doing like six hits. Go he's ahead. not finishing his combos. He's just doing one, two hits, because otherwise if he finishes the combo, he just hits them across the... Now here's guard armor. He's going to try to knock him down with a nicely timed parry there. Uh, not quite knock him down yet, but uh, he will knock him down later. He's going to get two jumps here. He's going to get a parry right here or a stagger right there. He's then going to get as many combos as he can. He also has to mash out these air combos quite a bit, or Sora likes to just whiff that thing. Now right here, knock. There we go. There's a the perfect knockdown. He's going to kill off the pieces first, which you have to do before the body. Generally, the arms are more dangerous, so you take those out and he's working on the feet. Uh, there are periods while Guard Armor is switching between moves, like right now, where he's actually invulnerable. Um, even if you had, like, scan at this point, you can see that he's not really taking much damage. So, so that leg wants to stay alive. <laughs> there it is. Oh, he wasted the ether. Oh, oh, that's Goofy has one ether, and you pray that he doesn't. It's, it's a little more rare that he'll use it. But again, as Hobbs was talking about, until he comes down there, yes, that was a good fight. That was a good fight. That is one of the real easy places to take a quick death right away. So yeah. really it might not look like it, that. but those shock waves, like you're, this is going to be a theme throughout the run. So we'll just go ahead and put it out there now. Pretty much almost everything is going to two shot you in this yeah. game. So if he mistimes that parry right at the beginning of the fight, then he takes a ton of damage. He has to run away and throw a, po a potion potentially, or he's going to get one shot. Usually he's under damage. He's not going to get the knockdown. The legs and arms are going to break off and go off everywhere and then snipe you from behind. It gets real bad real fast. So. Yeah. He's going to be doing a menu shortly after uh, Donald gives him ability, uh, gives him the fire magic, rather. Mm. And uh, also he get, learns the ability dodge roll. The menu is going to be to put dodge roll on mainly. And uh, you actually have uh, the protect chain that you picked up earlier. Is that going to mess with any of your menus? No, or? I mean, slightly, but I sell most of that stuff anyway. Okay, yeah, he got a random drop from... Uh, one of the soldiers. It could be beneficial it, for yeah, money, you know. It actually could, that's true. And now normally in your in the Japanese Ooh, run <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> he did want to take the potions from the party members there and yeah they unfortunately used a lot of them. Um, now in the Jap Japanese run normally you would just leave Traverse Town right now. Mm -hmm. However, because we're playing on English there is one English exclusive glitch. We have no idea why it's English only, so don't even ask. Yeah. But he's gonna be going all the way over to this wall, uh, this you know barricade here, and there's gonna be a red trinity mark on the ground. He doesn't have red trinity, but you're supposed to need to be able to open this pathway to the secret waterway. However, if he just holds forward after this cutscene, he'll just walk right in. Boom. We don't know why, so <laughs> yeah, excellently it's, done. Yeah, don't clap for that. <laughs> I'm just throwing that up. <laughs> Literally any baby, if they hold forward, would be able to do that. That's it's such a bizarre glitch, and yeah. again, more bizarre that it doesn't work on Japanese. One of the reasons we never found it for so long is that you actually only see that cutscene about how trinities work the first time you roll near a trinity. Mm -hmm. So it, normally we would go to a different trinity and we never would have known. But right. uh, Sonic Shadow Silver 2 found that, I believe. So shout out to Sam again. Yeah, and so I get my first summon item, but I can't really turn it in yet. So Sadly. it's still nice, though, to split up this visit so that I don't have to do this when I come back. Yeah, normally Traverse Town 2, I don't know what the timing of it is necessarily on PS4, even really PS3, but it was well over 10 minutes. I know in your best splits, it was probably like 12 plus minutes in Traverse yeah. Town 2. Traverse Town 2, yeah, that's a yeah. Lot it's quite a bit. This breaks up. You're basically taking the entire middle chunk of that, going to talk to Leon there. You normally have to do a fight to get uh, in that alleyway to even get in there, and then going over here and talking to Merlin. You're just taking that whole chunk out. And when we come back here for Traverse Town 2, which was normally the slowest part of the run, now it's just like five minutes and you win. Yeah. Uh, to note, that was my first uh, magic usage now that I have fire. Oops. <laughs> now that I have fire, um, I jump and use magic a lot because I can cancel the animation on the ground and act faster out of it. That's a general why we also generally prefer jump uh, jump combos instead of ground combos. Is because the ground combo usually the finisher is going to have this big long animation, whereas with an air combo, when you land on the ground, it's done. You can now immediately pick up and keep doing damage. And you can buffer jumps from that too to do fast air combos. Mm -hmm. That's why you even saw like high level runners like this will even do air, air combos on like shadows, which are as tiny an enemy as you can. 
It, it's hard. You have to mash pretty hard and be good at stalling the combo, too. Yeah. Or else you'll just whiff really high in the air. And anyone who wants to kind of see for themselves the benefit of, you know, using magic in the air versus the, the ground, just go open, you know, open your game, load up a, any file, and just try to do a bunch of uh, gravities or something in the air right. versus doing them all on the ground. It's really, really fast in the air compared to the ground. There are some times, though, like you'll see us when we're doing like a fire spam or something later on where the, it actually does balance back and forth between sometimes you do want to be on the ground. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting to kind of little quirks there. So now that we're almost done talking to Merlin, we really only came here because now when we come back for Traverse Town 2, we can warp to here. Uh, and also for this Trinity that's going to give him some needed mega money ether. and a Mega Aether. I'm going to be using it anyway because uh, good old Gafi over here wasted the uh, Aether. Uh, yeah. Yeah, again, normally Donald, so Donald's going to have two potions there, and Gooby's going to have three potions and an ether. So it'd be nice to have had all of those, but he got two potions out of yeah. all that. Pretty unlucky. Meanwhile, we <laughs> are doing our gummy ship editing. You start out with this nice, fancy-looking ship, and we turn it into nothing. <laughs> it is a flying tissue box, but darn is it going to go fast. Yeah. So I guess it's worth noting that this is only for level one you do this, where we go to Olympus rather than Wonderland first. There's a couple reasons for this. For one, we want to get Thunder, and that's because we need to get one of each magic to be able to get the Spellbinder Keyblade later. And it will also speed up Deep Jungle and Wonderland by having Thunder, which is actually pretty strong for early game. So it has that benefit as well. And it also makes more sense to do this first rather than loop back around the other way. Yep. Uh, it is a very long mission, actually. A very long gummy mission to go the other way, so... Mm -hmm. I guess also worth noting is I can get one, two, and three-shotted really easily on these gummy missions. It's not like 2FM, where all difficulties have the same gummy missions. They are harder on Proud in 1FM, so I have to be really careful. That's why I put a gun on for safety. Yeah, if you're hardcore, you just, and usually beginner runs you just won't put on a gun in this menu. They'll wait till a later, till later one when they're not going past it. But, um, or if you want lazy strats, you <laughs> off last year. Um, so to kind of know how the gummy ship, like why this is faster, so it kind of has different weight classifications, the ship does. So we just take all of the armor off. You technically could only take off like half the armor and be just as fast as this, but it's a lot faster to just take all of it off and just be good and just don't get hit in a gun mission. That was probably a good donation time while I'm finishing this up. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. We have a $100 donation from Bloody Biscuits. Hey, hey what up, what's up, Blake? Hey, everyone. Just wanted to give a shout out to my brother, Biscuit047. <laughs> <laughs> We've been playing Kingdom Hearts since we were young boys, seeing how many times in a row we could beat level one Terra no damage. Mother Biscuit says it was a tie, but I think I won 51 to 50. Either way, good luck on the run. I know you'll do great. Thanks. <laughs> Going full in on that meme. Man, I don't think I remember this, but I'll believe it. <laughs> <laughs> what a good older brother you are then. All right, so yeah, this is Olympus Coliseum. Again, this is a really short trip. We're not actually going to be completing the world or locking the keyhole or anything. We're just going to do these two little uh, uh, mini games given to us, these, these, uh, these training sessions by yeah. Phil. And you saw him push the rock there. Normally, you talk to Phil. He says, go push the rock. You push it, and then you talk to him again. It's just a little bit faster to push first. So here, you just want to like, aim in the middle of these barrels. Um, he'll do air combos or ground combos just to change the trajectory of the barrels. And again, air combos are a little faster, so whenever it's a single barrel, he's going to try to do that. But they are, like the first one, still a little difficult to actually hit in the air. This is the longer one. Uh, it's a lot better. <laughs> or not a lot better, sorry, rather. A lot harder. <laughs> Man, I'm having fun. <laughs> uh, what's funny is that like in an all-world speedrun, you would have to do this section, but you would normally come here with gravity. You can actually just use gravity to kind of one-shot most of these large groups, so it's pretty specific uh, pace, spacing rather than it used to do uh, without having Fire. gravity. Fire to finish them off. That's usually how they go. Yeah, a little trolled by one or two, but that's mm -hmm. kind of how it works. And that's all I need to do to get Thunder. I don't have to go uh, into the little mini tournament they have or fight Cerberus or anything. Right. I can just waltz right out. And again, the thunder we're getting right there, it's a nice uh, uh, 
magic spell to have in this early part of the game, especially in this ne these next two worlds. Um, but it's also for a much bigger purpose later on in the run that we'll get to. Yeah, and again, this uh, so this coming mission between I want this call CM and Keep Jump on Out is actually probably one of the longest ones out of this early ring. Uh, but we don't have a way to warp back to Traverse Town yet or anything, and it would certainly be longer to go to Traverse Town and then Wonderland. Uh, than just continuing on and going to the jungle. Yeah, again, normally you just never have to come to Olympus Coliseum because all the game checks for is that you get the warp gummies from both Wonderland and Deep Jungle. There's a handful of worlds that you can skip in this game at like an 80% speed run. Uh, those being Olympus Coliseum and, uh, well, a couple others we'll talk about that later on as well. Redonations, don't let me ramble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you say so. We actually have a bunch of donations, so I just want to remind people, just because I don't read them does not mean we aren't processing them. We yeah. have a $10 donation from Anonymous saying, good luck on the run, Viz. It's awesome to see how far you've come in just the year I've been watching you. We also have a $20 donation from Dutch Masters. Shout out to Biscuit047. Literally just watched a YouTube video of yours and just wanted to say good luck. Definitely getting a sub when you go back to streaming. We have a $10 donation from Anonymous. Hey Spike, I see you rocking some old navy plaid there. As someone who works there, I demand that you give us free advertisement. <laughs> I am donating for it. I'm wearing old navy. <laughs> also, did you mean to match the couch or was that an accident? No, oh, man. Get ready for that joke, man. 40,000 more times. I, okay, I just want to note, like, four different people in a 90-second period of time walked up and said, <laughs> someone's going to sit on you thinking you're the couch. <laughs> That's all they all said it too. It blends in more on the camera than in real than life. Than it does in real life, yeah. It doesn't but really it look the same still color. blends in fairly I well. I planned life. this well. I backed this shirt specifically for Limit Break, this couch. <laughs> all right, so Kingdom Hearts, right? So we're about to waltz into a deep jungle and we immediately die. <laughs> and Man, rip run, dude. Yeah. We'll come in way underestimate. Savor is just too hard. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times in these fights, the uh, the game allows you to die to progress if there's no way for you to like be back in a room where you could go save, where you could leave and go save. Yeah. This is one of those ones you land in the world and immediately get thrown into the fight. So yeah. you can die to progress it instead of having to worry about being able to go save somewhere. I'm going to have a menu over here where I'm going to steal all of Tarzan's items, which is a reoccurring theme because we're really good at using items compared to our party members, <laughs> which we'll just use them for no reason whatsoever usually. So I'm going to steal them. I don't think I've used any yet. Nope. Okay. Are you not getting the Mega Potion? Oh yeah, I probably should. Uh, Pull back. Yeah. <laughs> I was worried for a second. This is for the Kurt thing. This isn't normal. <laughs> I could have got it the second time around, too, but I guess yeah, it makes more sense to yeah. do it before we forget. And I basically set Tarzan's abilities up to be a heal bot yeah. so that he will only use his MP to heal because we don't have Cure yet, so it's nice that he's kind of like a backup. Also, you can quit out of this mini game. Yeah. That's yeah. been a thing since Kingdom Hearts 1. You could actually do that. So now it's time to pick up some slides for a projector, and this is some actually pretty fun movement to do, I'd say, once you like start to get better at it. Uh, there's a little bit of optimization of trying to roll through the slides and then cancel the text box before your roll finishes so you never have any downtime. That was really well done by Biz. Mm -hmm. Like there was one on you could see there was a state sitting on a box. He just kind of jumped up to it, touched it, and then fell immediately back down, not actually landing on top of the box. Yeah. He's going to grab that chest you see in the cutscene right there. I keep pointing at the screen like you guys can see it. Um, uh, that is just going to be sold later on. There are two total shopping trips in this entire run. So if you don't like shopping trips in your RPG speedrun, this is the one for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's going to be sold later on for a couple of gummy pieces. And for extra ethers later on as well. Yes. <laughs> Level one definitely needs the extra ethers. Yeah, and that's why he also picked up a mega ether on his way down to the, to mm -hmm. the tent. Oh, I forgot the customize menu. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was wondering why you didn't. This is that. only because of English. On JP, I'm okay with the default. Also, I button map on PS4 because I like attack being circle. Yeah, that's a feature you can actually do with the PS4. It's pretty cool. It, forever, it's always been if you switched between English and Japanese uh, for Kingdom Hearts runs, you had to switch Dude. circle and X, and now you can just do it on PS4. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He made what? an early cycle there. That's yeah, that was good. That's yeah, good. that hippo that looks like it was completely down the ground. If he had been just a little bit slower, uh, the hippo would have been too low and uh, sort of been waiting around in the water, and you would have lost about three seconds. Um, 
Basically, going through the Hippo's Lagoon right there skips over us having to do this whole Vine minigame where you swing on it. We're never going to have to do that. It's kind of a recurring theme about Kingdom Hearts 1 FM speedrunning in general, uh, is that, or just one speedrunning in general, that uh, they give you all these minigames and we just don't do them. Yeah. It's uh, really nice that a lot of them are optional and a couple of them are really even just kind of like one uh, or two are useful for going fast, yeah. such as this one. Yeah. We go into it as opposed to going around to like the other side. So for a while, the community thought, oh, it's really slow to go through that, so we'll go around nice the back side and come around. How could so we kind of just ignore Sabor there. He's not important. Yeah. He's not waiting for us now. Now we've got our first real kind of force, well, not the first, but uh, we got some force mob fights here with Power Wilds, these monkeys. Thunder's really good. <laughs> Yeah, Don't blame. Uh, a lot of beginner mode runners are probably pretty jealous right now, but <laughs> keep in mind I get pretty much easily two-shotted by them, So, and I also don't have infinite MP. Yeah. So I just, they, Thunder doesn't use the orange MP bar mechanic that Fire and Blizzard does, so I use Thunder only three times right now and I'm done. Yeah. So, so now take I a have full to, blue yeah. segment for every Thunder. Ordinarily, uh, Blizzard takes, I think it's... You want like to explain that half of trick that while I do the next fight that I did right there? Yep, he uh, went into another minigame, quit out, and put him into a different room, which is uh, where he needed to move on to. So we didn't do that the first visit because uh, you actually just can't access that minigame yet. So what's really interesting about these five sets of power wilds that he has to fight is he has to kind of balance when he's going to use Thunder oh for MP, uh, when he's going to use up his MP for Thunder, and when he's not going to. Again, he has that one Mega Aether that he could throw here, um, but you want to balance that with when to attack because, again, your MP bar that's on the right side that you're looking at uh, in the right down, bottom right part of the UI, it's filling up as you're dealing physical hits. So, again, it's kind of balancing when is Thunder usually going to hit, like, a lot of enemies. Yeah, and if he ever has one left on its own, he could be using fire, which would cost less MP. Yeah. Keep pointing at the camera spike that helps. Yeah, out. no, that's, <laughs> it just looks so pretty. There I was an might example. Might not have to use the Mega Ether in this room. <laughs> yeah. There was an example right there of a fire he tried to cast, but it didn't actually go. Uh, after a little oh. bit of kind of tricky platforming here, he's going to try. Uh, Th this became harder in PS4. There, there, we there we go. Yeah, that's not normally that difficult. Yeah. So uh, he tried to use a fire there and it got canceled um, when he hit the ground. That's one of the kind of dangers of using your magic oh. in the air. Thunder. Thunder. All right, so again, you see. Oh, well, okay. oh, well now I have to use it. <laughs> That yeah. went too fast. <laughs> Unfortunately, it, they died Yeah, a little too fast. Going to have to pop that ether, the mega ether uh, specifically. Normally, we could use them via that command menu in the bottom left, but he has the potions still Jeez. equipped, which he is really going to want to keep on for a little bit. Thunder. All right. Those were good. Man, Thunder looks so nice yeah, on those well, fights. <laughs> it's not fair, man. Again, for a lot of the, uh, the the lower level categories, the beginner, even regular proud, you're not gonna have thunder there. So you're using a lot more blizzard that you get from Wonderland, fire, stuff like that. And just generally dying to uh, power wilds, it's great. All right, Sabor, you came up with this strat. You talk about yeah, it. Yeah, uh, so he's gonna go into this second fight with Sabor, which is the actual real fight. He's gonna dodge away from Sabor and uh, into this loading zone that we kind of came from. I'm using some thunders on the way just to bait Sabor over here. So then I'm gonna try to get one combo to stun Sabor and now do full ground combos while matching triangle to get his enemies, or his allies rather, to attack the same enemy. Uh, and they do a lot of damage sometimes. Uh, and he can keep the stun luck up, stun luck up the entire fight. Come on, kill uh, Let's go. It should be a couple thunders, I think. Uh, uh, in the bamboo. He got a little unlucky with where Sabor was getting knocked around from the finishers. Oh, but right, there we go. There we go. That was a decent fight. Like, it's hard to keep him stuck in the corner. Yeah, and you normally would have to worry, uh, what if I leave the room by accident during the fight? If you're locked onto an enemy, you can't leave through a loading zone, so mm. you don't really have to worry about that. Yeah, it just gets a little awkward, because you want to kind of step back and position Sora in a specific way, but, you know, Sabor's going to fall in a little different way every time. Tarzan and Donald are going to come in at a weird angle. It's hard to ever be truly consistent at that. But again, Hobbs came up with that strat years ago, even though he never runs proud or anything. Yeah, I came up for it, and it's used in level one, and I've never run level one once. Yo, this <laughs> fruit is awesome. you got to whack it 15 times. I don't care what your setup on what difficulty, you hit it 15 times, and it blows up. I think Dolly, you can uh, hack in the uh, Ultima weapon and still have to hit it 15 times. And still have to times. hit it 15 times. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. 
All right, so coming up here, we have got uh, honestly like a pretty terrifying fight that has gone through a lot of transformations. A lot of you who played this game as a kid, you know yeah. what it is, it's Clayton. This is the last fight before you have the cure ability. This is the big wall for casual people, the first yes. big wall. Uh, Clayton is just terrifying with no cure. There, he's riding a stealth sneak, but first we have the first phase where he's just gonna hit him uh, quite a few times and get him down oh. below a certain health barrier before it goes into the second phase. This is probably a good time to mention, too, that there's a weird quirk with the EXP Zero in the game that whenever he uses a finisher, uh, the stock finisher to be more specific, and then magic, it'll make that magic do more damage. So you'll often see him use magic in these fights, but try to do a combo before doing it. So he's pulling him back here towards the back part of this zone because he's going to knock him off a of Stealth Sneak, and now we're going to get the heck as far away from Stealth Sneak as we can. Yeah, and Clayton's being a bit of a jerk and getting stuck. We really want to get away from Stealth Sneak because it has these eye laser attacks that can be very difficult. He's going to run out all his MP here and then continue to hit him. He should be far enough away from the eye lasers now. But Stealth Sneak will come over here. He needs to mash out these one, two combos as fast as he can. As Kiwi brought up earlier with like the soldiers, he only wants to do ones and twos, not finishers, because it's going to knock him far away. Only using a finisher when he's fully set up on MP. Should be almost dead. Oh man, he's so oh, close right now. That there, Stealth Sneak, there it is. For a long time, the yeah. strat on level one there was to go hide up at the top of the area where yeah. Stealth Sneak can barely get at you because it was just that terrifying. Yeah. Uh, and luckily, you know, just from lots of practice and, mm -hmm. and some uh, more optimal routing and stuff, people like Biz are able to do that without having to hide like a little coward. <laughs> Again, like having really quick jump one, two, jump one, two, jump one, two, those combos, not nearly as easy as it looks. You're going to whiff a lot when you're first playing this. Also, all these chests he's picking up. Again, he's going to be uh, selling these for more money later on. Uh, and that is what it's called, by the way. That's not me being silly. M U N N I. Um, why? So he can. Why? Oh, it's why? Well, okay. Man, both of you would nod your head so clearly I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> Japanese, it's up. Oh, it's oh, monies in Japanese. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Gosh. All right. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so he's getting access to the uh, to a warp piece effectively here, just a navigational uh, gummy piece. He's also going to get the uh, red trinity ability mm -hmm. from this, which is why normally we couldn't go and get Earthshine back in Traverse Town from Leon until after Deep Jungle. Right. Um, but because of that weird clip, we were able to do it a little bit earlier. So I just got uh, my first different Keyblade there. However, I'm not going to be equipping it for a long time. That's because, like I mentioned earlier, there's a weird scaling system tied to the EXP Zero ability because you're not meant to be low level in this game. So they wanted to accommodate that so you don't do chip damage. And you also don't get one-shotted by everything. <clears throat> so um, I'm not going to change it because it's not going to affect any of the fights. So we have like kind of like a little list of priority for Keyblades, first being the best Keyblades are the ones that increase MP and then range. Anything after that doesn't really matter. Yeah, again, level one, your strength stat means nothing. Yeah. With that, we're heading over to Wonderland, which is normally the first world that you would actually fly to in a gummy mission in most runs, but it's the third one we do here. And during that time, I'm going to throw it over to Nick for some donations. Yeah, actually, we do have a ton, but I just want to update real quick on the Birth by Sleep character bid. Oh. Right now, Terra is sitting at $718. Aqua at 543 and Ventus at 325. Hey, wow. it's making a comeback. It's making a the comeback. The three-way war it. right now, Come dude. on, like come it. on, Ventus people. Let's make it happen. So we have a $10 donation from Auk Ossix Blue. Shoutouts to the KH community for being super friendly and helpful and to Biz for trying to get Square to fix Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> trying my best. <laughs> that is true. Biz that, actually, yeah, legitimately. He actually compiled a, uh, a list of, like, all the problems with the PS4 port for the games uh, when it first came out. And Square actually did patch a few things. So Like two mm. things, and then they ignored the rest. We're hoping it's still coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe one day they'll patch out Safe Crash. We're definitely happy to have this collection. It's made it much more accessible for a lot of people, all the collection on one disc. It's nice just being able to swap from Cage 1 to Cage 2 just without even ever getting up. I don't need exercise. Uh, <laughs> Well, but we would also like to not have save crashes and just crashes yeah. in general all over our game. So yes. just please do that. That would be great. 
I think we can get one more fast donation yeah. in. We have a $100 donation from Al PlayPal. Can't, hey. help but can't help but donate during this fantastic run at this important marathon. P.S. Just for fun, I will be donating $5 for each death, intentional Ooh, or nice. otherwise. Ooh. And $20 for each hook shit missed. Good Ooh. luck, Miss. Time to go for the hook shit miss record. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I am sorry in That's advance. you know what? Okay, so I was gonna do a hundred dollars per death, and I'm gonna add on the hook shit misses, cause that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna donate a hundred dollars yeah. per death. I I uh, really hope that any amount that you can donate, it's a fun way to kind of play along. Mm. Just uh, there are two intentional deaths in the well, run. There's at least one. The other well, one would depend true. on my items. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's because it's level one in a marathon run. There probably will be deaths somewhere, yeah. if not. Only so, in final rest, mostly, probably 10. Play along any amount you can, and hook shit misses. We'll be sure to let you know when we get there. We do hope it doesn't miss. Yeah, all, I'd rather it didn't, but, but we'll, yeah. we'll find out. So uh, we've already had two intentional deaths, right? No. Nah. We don't really count those because oh, it okay. progresses. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll explain Depletion that. Depletion of the health bar, yeah. I guess. We'll explain that Going a little bit to later the on. Screen. Uh, I think you spawned the second group. No. Nope. Nope. Nah, what? Bad. I, sometimes it just lasts longer. I don't that know. was weird. So you, as you saw there, Biz had to just wait. Uh, his command menu was still red, and that meant that the game thought he was still in combat. And if you're in combat, you can't actually examine or interact with any objects. So he had to uh, specifically dodge roll in a in a very uh, you know precise way to avoid spawning more enemies, and then he had to wait for his command menu to go blue. So a fun little fact that a lot of people don't know about this mini game right here. So they normally want you to go around and find four pieces of evidence. He only found one, and then you can progress through the game. Whatever box hit the ground first, which uh, my, far left, far That's left, my guess. yeah, yeah. I'm like going far, far left. left. It's harder, to, legitimately, is harder to tell on PS4. They just drop yeah, almost like, impossible. Yeah. But most of the differences, by the way, are because they went from 30 yeah. FPS uh, nice. to 60 FPS in the yeah. PS4 version, so. Whichever box hits the ground first is that is going to be that hard list. So you, it's actually not just a random thing, how it shuffles it up. It is random, but you can tell which one it is. So you, now he's gonna have Donald and Goofy in this party for this fight. Uh, Crank Tower is a weird fight to say the least. He's actually doing really slow air combos, oh. which Ooh. actually allowed him to break all through those open. Yeah. So now, kinda nice having Cure right here. Yeah, ordinarily you wouldn't have Cure at this point because you would do Wonderland before Deep Jungle, so that is a nice thing about level one. He's being able timing to his finishers, so he tries to clank with black cards attacking him, so he's mm. jumping pretty high. Yeah. I was being pretty safe there by retreating. I could have tried to jump up straight Cure kind of thing, but that's an easy you way. could die. There's, there are two fights that are the reason I don't run proud mode, <laughs> and that are those are uh, guard armor and that. The card tower is tower. not normally as bad because we have cure here. You normally don't. Exactly. Sure. So on that regular nice. proud runs, that fight Wonderland's actually a little harder on normal proud than on level one. Yeah, it's another little weird quirk about that fight is that the actual tower itself, after you break the three cranks, until you have hit it one time, you can't lock onto it. So there's a million cards around it all getting locked onto instead. Yeah, it's So awkward. you kind of have to angle around it. Sora's going to want to auto lock onto them. It's really awkward. He's also, he sat in that chair specifically for this little mini game because he knew it would give him an elixir. So here's the first time where you're going to see him uh, be able to get, uh, again, because when you have this blue command menu, you can examine things, you can open up chests, open up doorways. He's going to do all three of these examinations slash open up these doors without spawning any enemies at all. And that's just by knowing where you have to stand to not spawn them. Yeah. So like after this, he's going to jump to the right, slash his keyblade, so that it gives him a little bit of extra distance to land on like those ramps, and then just go straight down to the keyhole. You used to be able to dodge roll between those tables, which was just kind of cool and scary looking. Mm -hmm. uh, you still can now, but it's not free like it was before, so. Uh -huh. It's really risky to go for. Want to make sure he landed on that save point so that he could get full MP. Uh, this fight with Trickmaster is a tough one because it's really a, to me, it's like a KH1 fight. It's this balance of not just combat itself, but there's uh, platforming involved as well. Yeah, th this is a fight that is really difficult at, for a long time and then becomes kind of fun depending on uh, how much you've run it. He needs to knock uh, Trickmaster down and get as many hits in as possible between each one. That first one, he's going to get less than some of these laters. Uh, so hopefully he will be getting, si or, uh, okay, not quite as many hits as I thought he was going to get there due to that thunder, I guess. Yeah. He's going to be doing these um, finishers before every thunder, like we mentioned earlier, for that extra damage. Thunder wrecks this nerd. Like, he yeah. goes down instantly from a, for a couple of those. Yeah. And he got eight hits after he knocked him down that last phase, which is normally what you want to look for, uh, because he had done his thunder early enough before. Now Perry City begins. 
And uh, it was probably good oh. for him to actually just accept that fall down there instead of getting hit. That is the last time yeah. Trickmaster will fall over. So now it's just a few thunders. Hey, that was a good fight. The definition of a good fight there usually is if he doesn't slowly walk over to the stove and he's yeah. getting ready to do his big and, you know, not invincible attack. You can still hit him during it, but it's really hard to hit him during it when he's kind of dancing around. Yeah, and that's where Thunder really helps a lot because ordinarily uh, for that fight, you would only have fire available to you right. at the time for magic. So you would just really kind of stick to physical hits because fire takes a little bit longer to hit him and it can whiff mm -hmm. and it's it's really a mess. Uh, so you only tend to use fire kind of when he's running away. But Thunder is really nice to be able to mix right in between those combos. Little thing you might have might have noticed or didn't notice at the beginning of the fight is he kind of just waited a second. Uh, and that was to just let Trickmaster get closer to the table yeah. and the chair to make the hops from the chair or the table up there a little bit faster uh, and a little bit easier in general. So He also just got Blizzard. Uh, so now he's got, you know, the holy trinity of magic, the uh, fire, Blizzard, Thunder. And he also has Cure. Yeah. So he'll be sticking with mainly that magic for a while. And uh, now we're just heading back to Traverse Town. So. Yeah, I would actually like to take this quick one because I know you have a lot of donations. We have a little bit of downtime right here. It's kind of the biggest point of downtime. I just want to talk a little bit about this Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep bid war going on afterwards. Any of you, again, it is between the three characters. Uh, Adam is nice enough to come here. He will run any of them that you donate for. It looks like it's a very close bid war between the three of them. If you donate for Terra, uh, I think the most exciting thing about that is just that you have those final four boss fights that any of them could kill you. They're all terrifying to watch, uh, you know, and he doesn't have as many overpowered abilities, so he's got to, you know, work with a lot more tools. Uh, Ventus is a really varied run, like we talked about. Some yeah. really cool sequence breaks all over the place. I know you've run it. Yeah, there's there's a sequence break uh, pretty early on against Super Glide, which is pretty cool. And uh, you also get to use a lot of different mechanics in the game to do crazy amounts of damage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Aqua is a girl. And Aqua is a girl. And one other thing to note about Aqua is that that is actually kind of the original category that blew up when we had access yeah. to. The Aqua, PS3 version. Adam was actually the one who routed it. Aqua is the fastest any percent category for Kingdom Hearts. So yeah, that is world the cool record thing coming that Aqua in has under done. 45 minutes. So very very short. Also has a hilarious cutscene. That is also true. it has maybe the greatest cutscene in the history of video games. I am not overhyping it. Yes, like, you are. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> you will lose it. You will lose everything you have. It is so funny. So with that. Um, Donate towards the one that's in last place. Right. I, I mean, I'd like to see a, uh, just a close bid war between three of them, all three of them. Get your donations in now. Let's push towards 100,000 tonight, guys. Let's kick it over to Nick as we're going through Traverse Town 2 for a lot of donations. Yeah, we have a $5 donation from Sephiroth1277 saying, my donation hey. is Albert's choice. We have what a up, five dollar donation from Mozilla Fennekin. Hey, Albert and chat. <laughs> Donating for, I'm Ventus. Call me Ven in BBS. The dream is alive, and also this donation is for Spike Vegeta. It's unfortunate that the couch has consumed his body from the neck down, and I hope he gets the <laughs> health he needs. Real quick, uh, we can take some more donations in a moment, but uh, he sold everything that wasn't an item in that uh, in that Mm -hmm. uh, little shop menu right there. He's going to be doing that just to buy some gummy pieces and uh, later on some ethers. Uh, and right now he's going to be getting access to Simba, the first summon of the game, mm -hmm. after delivering this book to Merlin. So uh, the warp is something that is new in PS4. The warp yeah. back out to the world map because of the loading times, it's faster now. But uh, without that, I think we can take some more donations. Yeah, we have a bunch. We have $12 from Anonymous. Yo, Biz, good luck. Really enjoyed your 1.5 runs for the PS4 the past month and glad to donate to a cause that's close to home. Here's to Terra, everyone's least favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> I have mad re We have a $5 donation from 13 Lightning. I have mad respect for anyone who can play KH games on the hardest difficulty. That KH2 run from last year was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. We have $25.25 from Anonymous. My husband, Ryan, int uh, excuse me. Thanks to my husband, Ryan, for introducing me to speedrunning. I love you, Ryan. That Kingdom Hearts run series is my favorite. Go Biscuit, glad to give to Nami. Great organization. We have a $10 donation from Kirby Masta. Kirby Masta hey. from behind the couch here. <laughs> hey, it's you. What's <laughs> up, dude? Right there. Could just I handed it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
<laughs> Kirby Master says he will donate ten dollars for each crash that happens in business run. Oh baby, let's Man. let's get him coming. Zero would be nice. Right? <laughs> I mean, you know, we I, had I, a legendary tweet out yesterday, or two days ago, of all four of our races all yeah. on. I think it's a little. I think it's time to come clean about that. We set that up. <laughs> we totally. But, yeah, we know how to do it. Yeah. But the fact that we know how to do it yeah. is still a bit of a problem. We yeah. finished our series wide race and then crashed all the games. But we Two do know how to crash too. all the games. <laughs> Two different games, not yeah. just the same game. <laughs> yeah, we crashed in 1FM and BBS, so. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he's gonna pick up some gummy pieces now to make his ship go faster. And then right after he leaves the, the uh, world, he's gonna put those on, so mm. go for it, Nick. We got a uh, little bit more time. Yeah, speaking of crashes, we have a $25 <laughs> donation from Raw Kitman. Just tried to do a beginner run on my PS4, and Simba decided to break my game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was one of the crashes we did. <laughs> I nailed that yesterday. I was great at it. I do actually, I, once again, I'm going to cut in here. Again, just another little way to make the ship faster. It's based off of what your highest single engine gummy is. So he basically upgraded there. He took the fire gummy off and gave himself the fire gummy. It's just going to make it move faster. And he also gave himself a haste gummy, which imagine like a Star Fox 64 style, like a short boost. You'll see it in the bottom right corner that it'll boost and then it'll have to recharge. It'll boost and have to recharge. Also, now uh, I can warp to places I've already been, so I no longer have to redo the same gummy mission. Yeah. Thank God. And he went to Wonderland there because it's a little bit faster to start this gummy mission from Wonderland than from Traverse Town. Yeah, probably on PS4 close to 10 seconds faster. But. All right, go for it, Nick. Yeah, we have a $25 donation from Not So Newbie. Hey. hey. This is an awesome Kobe. event. Not a huge <laughs> RPG fan, but I've been enjoying it a lot. Shoutouts to the Cage Boys and who I hung out with at all the GDQs. Good luck, Biz. One day I'll play Cage One myself. <laughs> I just adore that cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Anonymous. I've been a fan of Kingdom Hearts since the first game came out in 2002, and this is the first time I've been able to watch a speedrun of it. I'm sad I won't be able to stay up to see the Birth by Sleep run, but that won't stop me from donating to see the Aqua run since she is best girl. Thank you to RPG Limit Break for, for supporting such a wonderful cause, and good luck to the KH runners. That is. Oh, <laughs> by the way, we're going to the kind of craziest world, sort of. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> one, of the most, one of the easiest ones to lose time on, for sure. Yeah. One of the most variable worlds if uh, if things start to slightly go wrong. Very uh, common exactly. first death and run kind of world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It probably has the worst, if not one of the worst bosses in the entire run yep. here. Two uh, of them. <laughs> two, well, yeah, that's true. Two of them. Two of the top five, without a doubt. But yeah. I don't run level one, so I can't run. It's, it's like the same as Proud regular for that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Kiwi, why don't you tell us kind of what we're doing before we get to that first one? Um... <laughs> I don't. Put I know the bosses. The I don't know the. <laughs> got, all right, we'll we'll check back in at Pot Centipede. So what we're, That's fine. What we're doing right from now. our correspondent down yeah. on the field. <laughs> we need to get you like a truck or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. So those bandits back there. Yeah, they want you to fight them. But you don't do have that. to. You could actually. Uh, there's a keyhole you need to unlock later, and uh, normally the game expects you to fight some enemies to be able to do it. But we're gonna try to do it without fighting any enemies. A uh, little bit precise, but. Uh, not too bad. Meanwhile, he's going to actually be first picking up this uh, mega elixir. Aladdin has a mega elixir in his house. Why is he so poor? Yeah, he's rich, man. And he's also picking up a mega ether. Again, any kind of MP refilling items are fantastic for level one. And then uh, he'll be moving on to finding Aladdin for the first time and trying to save him via the first use of the Simba Summit. Yeah. Now, this is the probably the biggest potential crash point in the game. Uh, but probably not so much if, uh, if he gets a little unlucky. On level one, he shouldn't be able to crash because yeah. it doesn't tally EXP, so Simba shouldn't have a chance to jump at the end when it fades out. We're hoping. Yeah, we're, <laughs> so. we're hoping. I mean, sometimes I get surprised. Yeah, so he's moving in kind of a specific way to force these enemies to pop out of the sand. There's still one who delayed, but nice. perfect. That was great. That's, I'm clapping I'm for clapping. the game not crashing. Not crashing. <laughs> Biz did all right, but the game, solid A-plus effort. Yeah. It did what it's supposed to do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to put Aladdin in the party. In general, we uh, tend to favor the world party members. Not always, but especially early on. And he's also going to be taking Aladdin's items pretty soon uh, in this upcoming menu, as well as putting on the Jungle King Keyblade mm -hmm. that he got earlier, which, as Biz mentioned before, is just for the little bit of extra reach it gives you. 
So taking all of his items and putting on Jungle King and then taking off one of the items. That was a fun that, little skip there. Yeah. yeah. That skip is, depending on who you ask, the same easier or harder on PS4 than it was it's before. Way, <laughs> Great commentary. <laughs> way better on PS4. Facts. It's I haven't missed it once yet. So we're gonna have some disagreements here yeah. on the couch. Yeah. Well, he had to nah. he had to leave the room right after entering because he uh, his command menu was still red, which meant that he got a bad spawn in that room, black fungus, and they just take a long time to kill for no real benefit at level one. So luckily, you can't get them twice in a row, so it's yeah. safe to just re-enter the room. And on PS4, they're very short loads, so it, you don't lose quite as much time uh, unless boy. you leave again. He could get a bad. Okay. No, I don't think you can get Black Fungus re-entering a second time. Oh, you can. Yeah, <laughs> I I've have done we've it. had it happen. <laughs> oh, maybe it's only white mushrooms then. So another keyhole that he has to unlock. Uh, it's just the kind of little Yo, puzzles nice about Agrabah. And uh, now he's going to be heading on to the one of the worst bosses in the road. What a Pod true Centipede. turd this boss is. So I'm going to check back in with our correspondent on the field, Kiwi, Kiwi. Justice. Yeah, don't <laughs> Under, say Justice. Okay. Okay. Underscore, <laughs> underscore Justice. Okay, okay. Right, yes, yeah, so this yeah. I can talk about. Okay, Pot Centipede is not a fun fight for multiple reasons. First of all, there are pot spiders everywhere that are all targeting you, along with uh, Pot Centipede himself can just break apart and go after you and you need to find a safe space. Otherwise, all the pot spiders will be attacking you. Not to mention the camera is not very forgiving in this fight because you have to go down the hallway. Because, oh, that's a black. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Those pot spiders, they are some ninjas, man. Oh Let me tell you. Okay. That hit is kind of normally taken. Yeah, you can't really okay. avoid it. Jump. It, it's not very fortunate here that he has like four pots behind him. Yeah, this is a little unlucky. Usually there's not like 20 pots over here. He yeah. broke apart. Now he needs to be safe to stay back till he goes back together. Yeah, you want him to be formed together so that way uh, uh, here we go. you okay. can hit him without we wanted, really being in as much We want him to keep moving. What he's doing is he's doing aerial combos here, and this is good that there's only two pots there because his finisher can actually hit both the head and the back. He yep. broke apart again. Once again, unfortunate, he broke apart. We'd like him to just keep doing this running through the rooms bit. And the lower on health he gets, the more he will just run between the rooms for the most part. But every time he reforms, he actually gets a little bit of health back. So it's unfortunate that he's breaking oh, apart so often. Hello. Okay. That was a little scary. Unfortunately, and this is not the run he wants. This is more targeting he him, I'm sorry. Oh, nice. It's a little bit trolly, but that's not much I can do. Yeah, this, this is fights. like the the next two fights. This and the next are like you have the least amount of control over. It yeah. feels like in the entire game. Ask any RPG speedrunner; they'll take the fight they can control over the fight that's random, okay. but maybe uh, faster. Sure. Oh, baby, <laughs> the dream! The Only one pot. One pot is good. Yeah, everything's hitting them—the front side and the back side. See how easy it is to get like sh like hit from behind like mm. that. I can't see anything from behind, so. If I'm not at full HP, I'm dead. It's yeah. worth noting, too, you actually... Nice okay. job. See if we can get to the loading zone in time? No? Okay. Nah. <laughs> yeah, you want to explain that a little bit, Kiwi? Yeah, so in the fight, that's all just one giant room, but once the fight is over, we're back to having the loading zones. So if he did get past like that shadow in the hallway, he would have been in this room, and he wouldn't have had to waste time going through the loading zone. But yeah. Only about six seconds or so, maybe mm. seven. Yeah, thankfully less punishing on PS4. But all right, on to the next awful fight. Yeah. So uh, this is another strat I actually came up with. I guess I'll yep. uh, talk Let's about it at first, which is uh, that Tiger had normally will shake his head around all over the place and he's very aggressive and he's incredibly obnoxious to try to hit. Uh, but if you hit him once from behind like that and then move down to his nose, for some reason he kind of behaves for a while. It's like you kind of, you know, like slapped him on the nose and you need to like, tr teach him it, a lesson. It almost like takes, because normally he'll swing his head around and then he'll be flat like this. It almost like switches the order of those yeah, to where he starts weird. flat. He just starts out flat for a lot longer. And now Biz is uh, constantly switching targets here because you actually need to kill both eyes. And if you kill one eye before the other, then it's going to become a lot more aggressive. As soon as one eye is dead, uh, it's a lot more aggressive. They are now Heartless out on the field. He doesn't know necessarily what got spit out. It could be a fat bandit. It could be regular bandits. It could it be. seems like it was probably a fat bandit. Which no you one... want those fatties, dude. Yeah. Fat or uh, regular bandits will launch themselves up. Yes! At yes. That was All a right. beautiful fight. So if he spits out not the fatties, they'll be just the regular bandits or the air soldiers who will come up there and just start hitting you, wrecking your day. You'll yeah. fall off. Everything's going to be hitting you. It's really uh, not a fun time. Down here, we have a little maze that we're going through. 
Um, he's going to be going to hit the save point because later on we're actually going to be wanting to warp here, and he's going to jump over to get this chest for a cottage, I believe? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, and that cottage uh, refills all of your party's uh, HP and MP completely, but you can only use it from the menu, so you can't use it in battle like we can with potions, ethers, elixirs, mega elixirs. So those are useful in very planned out uh, spots. And then hitting that pillar is required to proceed to the Jafar fight. Yeah, kind of the end of the puzzle down here. So that's why most of the Cave of Wonders is spent down here. He's got just a couple of rooms left. Yeah, we'll talk about it more when we come back here later, but he uh, that save point was, as Kiwi said, to come back later for once he has high jump. He uh, can't really get what he needs without it at the moment. Uh, right here, he's got an elixir. I think Aladdin attacks something in the Lotus Zone. But, um, right there, again, that swing will just give you a little bit of extra distance. Uh, if you time it right, you're able to get a ledge grab out of it as well. Luckily, it looked like the party members fell in the pit, so they weren't blocking your way back. Yeah, getting in the way. All right, so coming up for this Jafar fight, um, Bloody Biscuits came up with a strategy a few years ago where you normally go up and you just wail on him and hope you're doing good damage. Uh, he's actually going to be leading with a 1-2 Blizzard because that's going to cause Jafar to wait and use another attack phase, which is Magic Barrier, which he reacts to just by having uh, being right. hit by magic. And doing that stalls him on one platform long enough for you to hit him more to potentially just reduce the number of times he moves between platforms. Yeah. He also got a piece of equipment from Pot Centipede that he put on there that gave him more MP. So again, hitting that blizzard right there. Now he would like Aladdin, specifically Aladdin. By timing that stagger right, he was able to keep him staggered in place. That can be a little bit awkward. He's trying to look for not over damaging him here, which unfortunately without scan, because we're on level one, you can't really tell. Now he's gonna actually move as far away from that platform, kind of be on the opposite side, because Jafar is going to move to the platform that's opposite of where Sora is. Now he waits to time to get that stagger correctly. Again, using the blizzard, got his magic barrier right here. And here's where we find out if he over damaged him before, and nope. it looks like he's good. Now, if he is lucky, if he had good damage, he can maybe kill him on this side. Yeah! yeah. Two cycle is Optimal. about as hard to do on level one, and even proud, as one cycle is on beginner. Yeah. And they're both incredibly difficult, so that was a beautiful fight. So now we got to go check on the unconscious Jasmine, mm -hmm. and then uh, fight Jafar one more time. But this time, we're really going to be focusing on his lamp genie. because he uh, turns into a genie. If you've ever seen the movie, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spoilers, man. If you didn't play the Kingdom Hearts series, it's you'll watch like the movies. Half the games. Yeah. <laughs> this fight is pretty interesting because there's actually two targets. You have genie Jafar over here, who you can attack with blizzards, and you have Iago, who you actually want to focus on with the lamp. You're actually going to influence his movement by jumping to the left there to try and get him to hover over the flame here. But you don't want to over damage him. All right, the finisher clanks with the rock, so you should be fine. Yeah, so again, wailing on him as much as he can because, like Kiwi said, didn't get enough damage right away. Iago sat there for a lot longer. Yeah, it's a really interesting fight to get to switch back and forth when it's more optimal to switch over to Genie Jafar to get in those blizzards. Uh, when Iago's kind of in awkward spots. Uh, funny little part of the fire here, again, Iago's gonna be high up off the ground. He's actually gonna turn the camera away from Aladdin and Goofy, heal them. You saw how they were way over there, turn around, yo, what's up? Oh, I uh, pushed them off. For some reason, they just warp over here yeah. when you just look away from them. So now we hope Aladdin knows how to jump, which no. he currently does not. Oh, okay. there he goes. There, good job, buddy. Um, he's he also, is whiffing, uh, though. He's also mashing triangle, which, again, as we mentioned back in Deep Jungle, calls your allies to battle and gets them to attack it more often. So he should, Oh, he didn't oh, wow. even nice. need to switch over to Genie Jafar. That's unbelievable. That was yeah, that really was a good. perfect fight. <laughs> yeah. That's that was just insane. Yeah, that was a great aggro by the way. Pot centipede was a little trolly, but you really just can't not dying that. is yeah, a yeah, good exactly. Not dying is die. pretty good. Now aggro. speaking of not dying, let's not not die <laughs> right here. <laughs> See these boulders? It actually takes a little more skill than you think. We're gonna hit them with our face and die as quickly as possible. Hit yeah. a few more boulders, and uh, we're gonna be out of this. As we are, uh, what we a great day! <laughs> what a great day! <laughs> You would think the game would be like, nah, man, you got to get out of the cave of wonder. Nah, man. <laughs> you die, you can go right. on anyways. As Kingdom Hearts speedrunners, we're contractually obligated to mention in every single marathon run yeah. that that is one of two death strats that Spike Vegeta found by accident. <laughs> 
Man. Which means he actually died. <laughs> up to those boulders. So it genuinely is. A lot of those rocks are pretty easy to hit, but those first two, you kind of have to angle yeah. yourself in a certain way. Difficult. That just nicks the top of Sora's head. So um, with that, we're going to be uh, flying on our way to our next Disney World. We got Monstro. Not really a world, just it's a flying whale. So I'm going to kick it over to Nick for a few more donations. I see that ticker going up. Yeah, uh, another update on the character bid war up next. Terra is still sitting at $726. Dollars and seventy-seven cents. Aqua is at five hundred eighty dollars and sixty-nine cents. Laventus is actually at five hundred and sixty-five dollars. Oh! It started wow, out dude. at it started out at around sixty dollars before this run started. So See, it has, I believe in you. Oh I believe in all gosh. of you people who are donating. We can push it past Terra. At which point we'll begin telling you to donate for Aqua. <laughs> right. <laughs> Always root for the underdog. Yeah. But no, seriously, let's get that Ventus. Yeah, already Definitely. like oh, almost yeah. like eighteen hundred something dollars in that bed war. That's awesome, yeah. guys. Let's keep pushing. We have a twenty-five dollar donation from Anonymous. Here's my contribution during one of my favorite video game series. We have a ten dollar donation from Anonymous. My girlfriend is watching, and I wanted to donate during her favorite game of all time. I hope this donation gets read so that I can embarrass her on stream. Hi, Ashley. I love you. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. <laughs> Man, how embarrassing for her, right? <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Razzle Dazzle Yeah. Good luck, runners. And shout out to my wonderful boyfriend, Paul. We got some couples watching tonight. <laughs> I know you love Kingdom Hearts more than you love me, but in the name of Nami, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Same with him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for introducing me to speedrunning and loving me through my own battle with mental illness. I love you. Aw. So we're about to enter Monstro. I guess an interesting note is you can manipulate where he appears first, and then he's stuck there for the rest of the game. You can have him right in, uh, in front of Atlantica or uh, Halloween Town. We yeah. want him on Halloween Town because, for one, we don't do Atlantica, and yeah. two, Halloween Town is actually easier to do because you don't have to uh, do Atlantica. Well, it gives you a better reward. It's not necessarily easier. It's actually harder, <coughs> but the payoff is way better for the run. Yeah, it's yeah, going to give really you a magic weird. ability, gravity, which is going to do percentage damage, which you're going to see a lot of, especially later on in the game. The only time you might see Monstro in a speedrun on the bottom half of the map uh, over near Atlantica is in an all-world speedrun sometimes. Uh, some runners do that for a bit of a consistency quirk. Yeah, you were slow on those cutscene <laughs> skips, man. you got to work on the taking it's off It's getting hot in here, tech. man. Woo! <laughs> All right. Not like outside, apparently. <laughs> So now we're in Monstro. Monstro is notoriously a pretty confusing world for a lot of people when playing this game casually for the first time. However, it's really not too bad for um, running. It's also one of the shortest worlds, which makes it pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and it shouldn't have too high of a risk of dying. Plus, we just recently got access to the Genie Summon, which, if I'm not mistaken, we'll be seeing here. Yes. Yes. We're going to see him in two fights, both of the fights in yeah. this world. <laughs> first, though, I have to go out of my way to grab two chests. One is Flare G, which is way earlier than most other runs. And so, we also get a, a Mega Elixir, because I need as many as I can get for the end of the game. Okay. So in other words, if last year you saw me miss Chamber 3 skip, that was just, you know, a little planning for later, for right. eventually doing this. I totally this, saw it The movement in this room is extremely specific. If he had not moved exactly like he did, lock on, shoot two fires, dodge roll forward once, hit them with blizzards. He would have been spawning other Heartless in yeah. this room. You'll see right here, he's going to spawn some yellow operas, and those are really obnoxious to take out because you can't use thunder on them. So yeah. uh, it's very specific movement, like Spike said. All right, so again, right here, he's going to clear out this room. And once again, I forget which one was which. I think the last one was Flare G. And now we're going to be picking up the Mega Elixir. Again, anything that refills MP, Mega Elixirs, Mega Ethers, Ethers, Elixirs, we're going to be picking those up throughout the game. Cottages. Yeah. And I mean, you've been watching a lot of Final Fantasy Rose and everything. But just to reiterate, your Ethers refill MP, Potions yes. Health, Elixirs, a full HP and MP refill. And Mega Elixirs give you a full HP and MP refill to your whole party. Uh, with slight exception if they're dead. Uh, the rest of us just go through. If you ever need like a good casual strat in that first loading zone after you Why skip the cutscene, jump up on the ledge to your left and just follow the things in front of you and you'll get to this fight. 
So yeah. here we got Parasite Cage 1. So we've been talking about these interesting little scaling issues that they had to do to make EXP0 a thing and a level one playthrough a thing on Cage 1. Here you're going to finally see it put on display. We're going to drop down and get in about five or six combos, uh, just kind of fill up some damage because we might not kill him with this next thing. By ending on a aerial finisher, we do this technique that our community calls damage storage. More accurately, you're storing the multiplier of that aerial finisher, which yeah. will then be applied to all of your ma offensive magic or your summons afterwards. So now we're going to pull out Robin Williams. I get it. He's Dan Castellaneta. Robin Williams, we don't know. Um, and now he's going to target on. And then if you had, if you see a game, or he's wow. died. <laughs> You didn't need to do near as many combos at the beginning of that That time. is the fastest I've ever seen that nerd die. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. Usually, he doesn't die that fast. Genie has access to a lot of different uh, spells and everything, and uh, really, we just want him to fire these orbs at the enemies every time, but he does pick randomly between which ones he wants to do, right. so that's why the fight can be a bit variable and why Biz did so many combos at the beginning when he knew he could keep the boss stunlocked. Yeah. Uh, right here, uh, just there, Goofy actually got the cheer ability, which is useful because it's actually going to extend the length of uh, your summon gauge. Yeah. Um, your summon gauge is determined by your max MP, which right now we have four. Again, another thing that just having more MP is beneficial for. Um, but also, cheer just makes the gauge going down just take longer to go down. Yeah, he also got high jump, as you're seeing yeah, right now. So nice good. heal by Donald. He yeah, was dude. on that he one. He knew it. I don't think he would take a damage yet. He was already ready, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so same kind of thing again. He's going to be trying to stunlock this boss. You can get a really early uh, stun at the beginning if you want, but it's very risky to go for. So at level one, much safer to take that dodge roll away. Party members can and often will ruin the stunlock. Yes. Yeah. And he also, yeah, like for, at the beginning, moved away to pull Donald and Goofy away from Parasite Cage so that they wouldn't die. Because yeah. you can only use a summon if you have two party members with you and they are both alive. And two extra party members. After uh, you know Parasite Cage was finished being stunned there, he he starts to get a little bit more aggressive, and it's really hard to stunlock him again. So that's uh, why Biz went straight into the summon, and hopefully some should be able to finish off the rest of the damage in this fight. That dodge roll there was actually to have some iframes through that acid attack he uses. He's going to have to use another one right here. All right, so we're, we're kind of going, okay. all right, there, there you go. go. Cutting it close there. Yeah, that, that was he the kind of evened. Shot. He evened it out. He showed you how random Genie can truly be. That killed him in like three hits in that last fight. There took two full combos to get there. Yeah, you also saw him throwing out some uh, fires in between. Again, he just had a, a little bit of extra chance to do some more damage. Yeah. And because he used that full combo with the finisher mm -hmm. before, that fire is amplified like the summon uh, damage. So right. we'll be seeing that a lot from here on out now that we have Genie and Simba, uh, as well as some good magic options. And there's, it's, a, it's important to know that there's actually a lot of ways you can break that damage storage. If he goes up and just does an empty swing, well, now that's the last attack you yeah. did. So now that's the multiplier done. Uh, if you do special abilities like guard, which we're not going to get in level one, but if you do stuff like that, that will also break it. If so you parry with your finisher, it could potentially mess with it too sometimes. Mm -hmm. So he has to be keeping track of all these different things to make sure, all right, I am definitely getting this damage. OK, so yeah. since I was thrown right back out at Agrabah, I'm going to use that opportunity to go back in at the save point I touched and go get haste 2 early as well. So I'll have both player G and haste 2 way earlier than I was supposed to. Mm. Yeah, haste 2G being just an upgrade for that uh, boost gummy that we got earlier. Yeah. Yeah, Flare G upgrading Fyra, haste 2G upgrading, oddly enough, haste 1. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are normally both gummies that you would get like in other routes. Um, you would get later on, but it's starting to look like it's probably just going to be faster in all categories, even beginner, to just grab these. Yeah, most likely. But I think some people are still on the fence about it right now, so we just need to do a bit more timing and stuff. Yeah, it's exciting to see new routing. I know all of you in chat are going to wonder, those are puppies. Those are Dalmatians <laughs> that are in that chest. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was yeah. that? We don't need them. They're yeah. fine. They'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do find it, I still find it funny that <clears throat> even if you didn't want to do, in a, if you were doing like an all worlds uh, speed run, but you just want to do 100 acre wood or something, you didn't right. want to actually do all the worlds, they actually thought about it enough to go, there are no puppies in Atlantica because they would drown. <laughs> <laughs> What's in here? Oh God, <laughs> we need to leave right now. <laughs> so 
uh, he put on those gummy pieces there. So now we're going to see him move really fast, which is fantastic for speed, but not super fantastic for having, Survive. yeah, for survival at, on proud mode. So he's going to have to do a lot of his best dodging. But for now, we're first going to warp back to Monstro, and he's going to be picking up uh, the next summon gem, yeah. similar to the Earth Shine that we got back in Traverse Town to get Simba. He's going to be picking up Water Gleam now. We have no way of avoiding this second monster without wasting a lot of time, so we yeah. just use this opportunity to go back in and grab what uh, J Hob said. Yeah, Water well Gleam will give him the Dumbo summon later, and we'll get more onto why, where he'll be using that later. Yeah. It's also important to note that you could actually fly normally, because it spits you out at, at Agrabah. You could just actually fly normally to Halloween Town, and possibly Monstro would miss you on this version, but it's still faster just to go into Monstro and then warp out. Yeah. Because now this is going to be like the shortest gummy mission in the game. Back in the PS2 version, uh, before the original Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts one, you would hope that Monstro wouldn't show up, so we would have gotten Water Gleam in the first visit. But yes. uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, they made it consistent in this version, which they we would probably be happier about if they had done it with Hook Ship as well. But yeah. they decided to just do it for Monstro, where we could take the time loss. <laughs> so it's also while we're going through this super quick gummy mission, uh, the, the so you're already at Halloween Town. That's what I said. Bam. Those gummy pieces are putting it work right now. Yeah. Um, that uh, the in order to progress to kind of the end of the game, we need to get to Neverland. And what Neverland is checking for is you beat two of the three worlds on this like ring of worlds. Those being Monstro, Halloween Town, and Atlantica. So we're choosing to beat the two fastest worlds, Monstro and Halloween Town. It also works out such that the two fastest worlds also give us the best uh, magic for later on in the game. Whereas if we went to Atlantica, we would just get a thunder upgrade, which we don't really need. Lame. This is the longest yeah. elixir we grab. You ring the bell three times and you get a free elixir. But like I said, we need every single elixir and mega elixir possible to make level one a little bit more smooth end game. Yeah, otherwise we would have to take a lot more intentional deaths uh, as well as just having some fights be completely awful. But with that being said, I think we could probably throw it over to Nick for a couple donations as yeah, we're heading into sure. Dr. Fingerstein's yeah, lab. We actually have a $12 donation from Sonic Shadow Silver 2. Hey. hey, buddy. Hey, everyone. Sorry for not being able to make it to RPG Limit Break this year. Going to try my best to hopefully go next year. Good luck with the runs, Biz and Adam. $12 goes to Biz, Spike, j Hobbs, Kiwi, or Adam's Choice. And I'm not sure how he wanted you guys to figure that out. Hey, Adam, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> $12 on Aqua. <laughs> From Adam. From Adam. Not the rest of us. <laughs> Again, genuinely the greatest cutscene in the history of video <laughs> games. If you want some sick lore in Kingdom Hearts, you need to get Aqua up there. All right, so now we're going to be heading over to the first uh, forced mob fight of this uh, world. We're going to be taking on, uh, it's going to be three waves, a group of shadows, then a group of uh, uh, search ghosts, and then a group of white knights. Uh, you're going to wow, see the power right. of, oh, well. the, uh, of just having a lot of MP right now. Unfortunately, they kind of walked away from each other pretty quickly, so, so this angle was thrown off. Okay, so he still was able to kill those, reposition himself, five blizzards, and keep them stun locked. If he comes out fast enough, and see you, nerds. And again, your magic is not dependent on, you know, some, like, magic stat or, like, your your uh, your strength at all Broke or anything. Scene. Nice cutscene. <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's like a forward moonwalk. It's, uh, it's actually based on purely your MP. So he has four MP at this point. He's actually doing as much damage with magic as he would be on a, a regular proud run, um, which is why you can actually take out a lot of those enemies pretty quickly. Yeah, he's got a couple of ethers in his inventory right now. Just kind of throwing them around because you're going to have to be killing uh, quite a few Heartless just in these running around the rooms and just using magic just to progress through the world. Um, so he's going to be going back over to the... Again, kind of a, a little uh, 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 just annoying point, I guess, of Cage 1 is that a lot of times in these worlds, they make you go back and forth between the same spots. In this instance, Dr. Dr. Finkelstein's lab and the uh, graveyard. It's random whether he gets white mushrooms or white knight. Here, which he got well, white, yeah, mushrooms. white mushrooms. Uh, definitely, it's a preferred thing, I would say, uh, especially here on level one, um, where he can just hit them and say, well, they're gone. Cool. <laughs> that was actually, it, they, so uh, white mushrooms actually uh, want you to use magic on them, but only the magic that they're indicating you should use. And Biz was able to luckily hit three with one blizzard because 
none of them were looking for a blizzard to be used. That does save a resource for him, because usually you have to use a bunch of fires there. You'll have to pop an ether. Now he can just save that instead. And the more of those you have, the better. I still have to use an ether anyway. Yeah, I think he just gets to save it for a little bit later or something, maybe? Or nah. just, uh, no, oh, just the way it works out it here. It's okay. just safer to get white mushrooms on level one, but yeah. it's not really a big deal either way. As I brought up earlier, he had to use a fire there just to progress through the world to get that to turn on. And every time, even if you use it and then you just want to go back a screen, like we might see a little bit, um, hopefully he won't have to. Uh, he's going to have to use a fire again to make it go up. So back to Finkelstein's lab again, then he'll be heading right back to the graveyard again. Let's sneak in one quick donation, I think. Sure, we have a, another $100 donation from Al PlayPal saying oh, this okay. $100 is for Ventus, just for you, j -Hubs. Yeah, what up, dude? Thanks, Al. So now we're going to be heading back over to the graveyard. Again, he's going to have to use the fire to use this elevator to send him to the other side. He's going to have to listen for if Heartless spawn or not. If Heartless do spawn, that's what he wants. Or, or, the right Heartless spawn. That's what he wants to see, where it'll be three white knights and a gargoyle. Let's see if he gets it. Nope. God, I swear, wow. every time Both lately. black fungus. Yeah, yeah that's pretty unlike. So, yeah, that's probably what, like total about 20 seconds or so of time loss uh, completely randomly just uh, from those spawns. Because again, because we want that command menu in the bottom left corner to be blue instead of red so we can activate things, we're going to activate this uh, switch of swords on the hill. And you can't do that till you clear out all the heartless. Instead, there would have been black fungus there. They take forever to kill. Not worth it. Might as well just go back and reload the screen. Unfortunate there that both of those happen. Yep, so now he's going to be heading up to Oogie's Manor. And uh, we used to, for a long time, have to do a fight at the bo bottom of this manor in order to open a door. Uh, it turns out you don't have to. Uh, through a lot of community, you know, uh, dedication to figuring out a bunch of different jumps and stuff, you can actually skip having to open that door at all. That's what Biz is going to be doing after he went, in, went ahead and put a bunch of MP items into his... I did an inventory. elixir and two potions for safety. Oh, my bad. Lockshock <laughs> Barrel is a very risky, random fight, and I need a lot of MP, but when I run out of MP, I need something to try to attempt to heal myself. Speaking, I also get easily two-shotted. Speaking of MP, there's an enemy up here. He's actually going to do one-two combos on just to get the orange bar of his MP up because you want that as full as possible. <laughs> Ugh. We're gonna have to whack something else because we want as much Blizzard spam as we can. Did he get. Go? You could go for the gargoyle, dude. Did you just? You could go for the gargoyle. You're I mean, I throw it away. I you scared him so much he wasn't coming yeah. back. All right. All right. Okay. This is a fun fight. He's gonna jump back to the right and then just Blizzard spam forever, pop an elixir and continue Blizzard. Spam. Oh. Boy. Yeah, you can they already see they the spread side. out a lot. I think he's hitting a good chunk of them. They just they, they, they all the trolled me by going to the same spot, which is actually okay so yeah. far. Yeah, so the, as we mentioned multiple times, it's just one a dead. crazy dangerous fight. This is the easiest way for us to try to make it a little less dangerous. All right, we killed the two. Uh, wait, did you? Oh, no. No, this is no, the worst. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's probably almost dead. There we go. Nice. That was, that was, okay, yeah. If he gets hit, he actually wants to retreat to the couch there because it's the safest spot to try and heal. It's kind of messed up because if he ever did take a hit there, um, because of... <sighs> Because of how your health, uh, just kind of where your health is at this point in the game, Cure would not actually fully heal you from one HP. It so would have just put him a little bit below full, um, and then he would have had to uh, end up double curing, even though it's just that little sliver, because if he's not at full health, and it would do enough damage, it would just kill you. Yeah, we never mentioned before, but Oops, no. one of the ways they kind of made level one possible, despite the fact that there wasn't a lot of a lot of good scaling options in the game, mm -hmm. is they made it so that if you are full health and you have EXP zero on, you can never be one shot. Yeah. Uh, at least in, while you're Sora, if you're in the gummy mission, you actually can be one shot. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have full health, you will go down to one HP minimum. You basically have second chance for free, but only if you're at full health. So that's what... Uh, Spike was kind of talked about there. You need to make sure when you're curing, you are curing all the way to full. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we switched Jack into the party because he has cheer. Yes. And we want cheer because we're about to use another summon in this fight. Again, cheer being something that is going to elongate just the, the meter that goes down from this upcoming genie summon is just going to go down slower. This is one of those rare cases where occasionally beginner runners can get a little jealous uh, of level one. Uh, where. All right, cool. This, he's actually going to be able to end this fight very quickly, potentially. 
He's going to do a few hits and then make sure he ends with that finisher, summon Genie, and now hopefully Genie should do all the rest of the work for him. Jack yeah. actually hit him with uh, gravity. Did That's the that. one downside of him rather than uh, Dolan in this fight. But uh, it's okay because Genie's a thing. Yeah, normally you have to worry because you can only hit... Oh, wow. What's up, dude? That was rude. You can normally only hit Ogi a... Uh, a specific number of times before uh, he'll drop you off the platform. Yeah. Nice. But because we have Genie, we didn't have to worry about it. Uh, Notice so I had the double cure there because his swipe mm -hmm. sent me to one HP. Because if I were hit again, I would die. Yeah. All right, so Oogie Manor. This is one of just the straight up just most annoying fights on level one. Yeah. Be mainly because you just don't have scan. So he's got these seven orbs based all around the manor. After you kill three of them, the manor gets much more aggressive. It spawns heartless. Flames are shooting around. Poisonous things are shooting around. It's not a fun time. So what Biz has to do here is actually count his hits. He's going to try to get out 18 physical attacks and then six fires to keep it at this. Basically, imagine like physicals do one, fires do three, and blizzards do two. And also, on top of that, he has to keep track of his party members, which could come up and potentially do damage to these orbs. In which case, it's a little random or unclear, as yeah, Jack so did there. So he'll stop early, most likely. He'll bring uh, it to one HP himself, though, probably. So it's manageable sometimes. Yeah, well, your party members it. actually can't kill these orbs, similar to any bosses in the game. Uh, so that is a little nice. Uh, oh, man, Jack, bro, man. what are you doing, dude? He is just really trying to help. So again, hit there again. There are seven orbs, and again, after he kills the third one, that's when it's going to get more aggressive. He's trying to get all of these to one HP. He's going to try and kill the fifth and the sixth orb since they are in the most dangerous spot where gargoyles can pop up. Dude, man, I've never seen Jet. He's going in, dude. This is not what we want to see, honestly. He has to be a little careful here with the fires because they push him a little bit back oh. and he could fall off. And that Just random stay fire. away. Just go home, dude. I, he's coming back up here, I bet. He really also, you to see help those out. flames shooting out the top of the orbs. Those would also count for damage if he knocked those in. So he kind of has to make sure. Again, the worst things that can happen is that they end up uh, uh, that you end up killing orbs early because then you'll get those heartless and the more aggressive flames. Nice play. timely parry on that lantern there. So now he's just going to go in. He's not worrying about anything. Kill the fifth and the sixth orbs. And there should be. Okay. There's one down. So again, he could safely kill another one before everything gets more aggressive. Yeah. But only one more. Yeah. And then hopefully what's going to happen is he's going to be able to then go back down the manor and just one-shot everything if he counted this all out correctly. Don't stop. Oh, uh, don't do <laughs> that. And, oh, platform, please. Yes. All right. That's a little bit of a tricky jump that people added early on in 1.5 days. Yeah, shout out to the Mistmaster one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now J Jack and Goofy, they can go ham, dude. Now they can help out. Yeah, so now the manor is way more aggressive because he just killed the third orb, and that's why hopefully everything else is at one, maybe two hits, and he's going to be able right, to just boom. fly right by him and just kill him with some drive-by blizzards. This is where we're testing. <laughs> that's a good yeah. term. Um, uh, this is where we test how good uh, Biz's counting was. All right. Or rather, how much Jack messed with it. Yeah, nice there it is. Nice. Not dying in that fight is always okay. a good time. <laughs> I know that's probably one of the ones that frustrates you the most. Oh, uh, for sure. For it's a little annoying. It's one of the worst fights for me, yeah. Yeah, you go a little more ham on Proud Mode just because you have extra stuff. So you're trying to not have to do that extra going down the manor. But sometimes you just say, man. And I wish I could just go down the manor like that. And after beating uh, the manor there, we get the power of the stars. We get gravity, which is the yes. best thing that we get from this world. Uh, gravity is a spell that is similar to Demi in a lot of your Final Fantasies or Quarter. You know, it'll do percentage uh, damage based on the enemy's current health. It doesn't always work like that on some bosses, but is really useful for taking out Heartless. So it's uh, one of the best abilities for, or one of the best uh, piece of magic for the rest of the game. So I just got a new Keyblade, but once again, I'm not going to equip it. And mm. I also, I mean, instead of going to Neverland like most other categories, I want to get a better Keyblade that gives me more MP for stronger magic and summons. So we're going to go to that and get Dumbo at the same time. Yeah, Gravity was that last magic uh, ability, and uh, because he went to Olympus earlier and got Thunder, 
and talking to Merlin after you have uh, the lowest tier version of all magic lets him give you a uh, a new keyblade. Which we are missing we one magic though, which is arrow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> which I don't think yeah, we I'm talked saying. about much, but uh, in level one, it doesn't matter. It's not going to help. Only yes. Aurora and Aroga would, but they're not worth getting in this run. But it doesn't help you on level one at all. Yeah, arrow is a match ability that you put up. It's you, it's very good defensively, um, and a lot of other difficulties that it will cut. Well, I mean it does here too, but it will cut your damage in half. Uh, unfortunately, in level one against it, you're still gonna get two shot. Ordinarily, we would kill the enemies up here with a lot of physical hits, but uh, or for level one, we would like to use a lot of magic. But they're all. Uh, Magic immune to at least one type of right. uh, magic here, so Simba helps take these out a lot. They faster. also have really sporadic movements, so it's much yeah. easier to just do that. Yeah, yep. boom, they're all gone. Um, Even though we had to sit through that 18 second or so long cutscene right. for summoning Simba, it's still the best way to take care of them. Yeah. Real quick, do I have time to give you guys an update on that bid war? Yes. Very fast, yeah. We have $705 for Aqua. 761 for Terra and 795 for Ventus. We did oh it! My yeah! Go Aqua. Go Aqua! All right, yeah. <laughs> so Aqua's got this really cool cutscene in it, and yeah. like she she gets starting to do damage right at the beginning of the run. You know, mm -hmm. like, she's a girl. She's the fastest category. We're giving you all these positives. Yeah. yeah. So and let's, again, number one, like shout out to Adam back here doing the run. He actually routed it himself back in the day. And then, it's the one he routed. Yeah. Himself. We're gonna be happy no matter who wins at this point because it's a bid war, but let's keep that bid war rivalry going. Yeah, that is awesome. All that right, so he cool. threw another ether there. He wants full MP here because he's gonna be using Genie. Uh, little quirk about this fight, this pre-opposite armor fight is going to end as soon as one of the limbs has its health depleted. There we so go. that's why he just focused on one of the hands. All right. And now so we get again. some feet, hands, and some hand feet. Yeah, that's right. and his head's on his butt. All right, um, so he's going to have to jump and parry this instead of having like guard like we have in pretty much any other category. Again, just working with these like low amount of tools because he's not. Again, he equipped dodge roll forever ago. That was the last ability he equipped on yeah. Sora himself. All right, so. We haven't seen it with Genie yet because we we've only used him on single target fights, but if there are multiple targets on screen, he'll actually spread out his stuff mostly evenly, which works out for this fight since we want to go ahead and attack all the limbs anyways. So we should be seeing a hand blow up. Yep. Oh, and a leg. Alright, right, now he's just going to have to clean up the damage himself. Yeah, that Magic's really good for like finishing off just getting uh, the hands and feet broken as well. Now he's just got to kind of wait till he falls together, as he is right now. And this will end up being a really good fight in about three, two, one. Perfect. All right. That was a perfect fight. Yeah, yeah. that was fantastic. <laughs> Guard armor is a, a, a very obnoxious fight on pretty much every category. Uh, mm -hmm. Or sorry, opposite, opposite armor. armor. And uh, as is guard Oops. armor. And <laughs> also his platforming. He has yeah. the, those same issues that he did as guard armor uh, have where you, the pieces can become invulnerable while moving between mm -hmm. uh, while moving between the phases. So. Yeah, that's kind of the that is the locking of the keyhole in Traverse Town. They normally want you to do on that second trip way back when, um, but again, it's just easier now because we have access to Gina. And he's warping over to Merlin's now to go get that Keyblade because he did get Arrow, which is the last magic I forgot about earlier. <laughs> also, he's getting Dumbo here. Yeah. Yep. Um, which Dumbo is going to be used for uh, both his uh, uh, combat abilities, but also for some super cool skips that we're going to be seeing in a couple of worlds. Yeah, if you saw the beginner run that I did last year, uh, Dumbo was only used for uh, some kind of minor sequence breaks ish. Uh, uh, he was just really used for platforming effectively, but he will actually be used for combat in this run. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Now we're coming up on every 1.5 runner's oh favorite boy. part of the oh. run. <sighs> All right. Every hook shit miss. I want to see some donations from some people, okay? Mm -hmm. Even so. if you can only do just another dollar for it, yeah. just jump in. Every little bit helps. Every bit helps. So to there's like Nami. a roughly 70 to 73% chance hook ship shows up, and yet some of us runners miss it like three times in the same run. Shout yep. out to Mist. <laughs> yeah. I think the record back on uh, PS3 or PS2, maybe even, is uh, like seven by Toji, I think. <laughs> I think Toji Morrow has the yeah. best record. So I, like I believe it. It's seven a lot. or eight. So we Which can break that start, record. I'll when you start thinking about it. 
I'm, I'm we'll come in four hours uh, overestimate. $100 but. for every miss. So. Once we hit this loading zone, it's determined if we're getting hook ship or not. Mm -hmm. We still don't know yet, though. We don't know what triggers it, but yeah. we know when it is determined. Also, this is way scarier being Yeah, he's cast. moving <laughs> really fast. All right, we're going to know in three, two, one. We go! Yeah! Yeah! Right. <laughs> still donate. <laughs> Donate ten times what you were gonna what donate you were gonna because <laughs> we got it first try. Right? Hey, speed running! That's how it works. <laughs> so this is normally a like terrifying world. So to try to counter that best on level one, I do need the spellbinder keyblade, which is why I grabbed it. Trying to do it without this, I would have to double cure every single hit, and I wouldn't have MP to abuse a couple of things I'll be doing yeah. in the fights that you'll see real soon. And that spellbinder gives him plus two on his MP, which is the only stat that really matters at this point. Yeah. Which again, he's going to be able to use more magic, and that magic will be stronger. Yeah, I don't know if they mentioned it, but you could use power ups and defense ups in this run. There's no rules against it, but it's not going to change my damage output or intake because of the way it auto scales with EXP zero. Yeah, I was going to say we do get, we actually do get access to some abilities uh, throughout this run. At the end of this world, for example, we'll be getting R's Arcanum. However, uh, we don't have the AP to equip it, and AP boosts to equip that wouldn't really be worth getting because the abilities are not very useful since none of them are magic yeah. related. That was just a real cool sequence of movements there. I won't go back all over it, but a lot of it was just climbing ladders is slow, so we didn't do that for the first or third rooms, and grabbing ledges is slow, so we didn't do that in the what second room. Yeah. By doing a fire to fall into that hole. So it, it wasn't just random movements he was doing. That was a lot of cool little movement tech that... Uh, I think it's one thing that's just nice about KH1 speedruns in general, that platforming does mean something, and your movement does mean something in a run. All right, they, so they made all that movement harder in PS4. Yes, so. they did. Or just straight up patched it in PS4 because of different things. All right. So we're heading up. We're going to get set up with that Spellbinder Keyblade. The Ray of Light, again, there also is a plus one MP, so very useful. Taking all of Peter's stuff because all that looked delicious. Um, and equipping an ether on top of the potion he already had. Mm -hmm. So he's still got that potion for safety if he somehow runs completely out of MP. And he's got the ether in order to refill some of that. Why don't you talk about the first half of Antisora and then I'll take over at the loop. Yeah, so at the beginning of Antisora, he is... Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, Antisora has some kind of random patterns here. So he's trying to do some uh, very specific hits and then end with a finisher so he can do a lot of fire spam to force him down into uh, this looping phase. Doesn't look like he's wanting to quite cooperate at the moment. Yeah, I'll he be always breaks out eventually. It's okay. not the worst thing. Ever. Look at how much fire spam he got to do because of the spellbinder. Yeah, and there's that usage of the ether in order to refill that MP. So now he should be pretty uh, close to the, his explosion phase, which is what we want. Uh, but first, he has to worry. Normally, to figure out which one of these uh, clones is the real Anti Sora, you would actually look at the health bar, but we don't have scan. Now during the looping phase. Yeah, during the looping phase, either a finisher or after five hits, he will always break out. It's actually a very tiny window to keep this uh, to keep this loop going. That first aerial slash he's doing from the top, uh, that's giving him the most active frames where he could get it. But by doing this, he's always going to come up, try to do an attack, you dodge that, and then you can keep him in the loop. So he should be getting relatively low at this yeah. point. The best part timing. about this fight is that Don and Goofy are dead right now. Go ahead. Yeah, timing that hit is a lot harder than it looks. Uh, and so, uh, like, first of all, it, it's hard to time it, but also you can dodge go. it. That was really good. Now yeah. we're going to run into that load zone and maybe get a quick load. No. <laughs> I've never been able to get that yet. I don't it's, know. It's, yeah. yeah. I don't even try. That's weird. But this whole, like, this white screen, yeah, it, it's not, we don't need it. Yeah. Normally, this would be the hardest menu of the game, but he doesn't have to do one. Do it. Yeah. I'm so jealous. <laughs> and again, used a blizzard there just so he wouldn't grab that ledge. Stepped on the save point there so he could refill all of his HP and his MP. So, yeah, so the funny thing about the menus is the item menus are a disaster in this category because it's <laughs> very random when you might have to get extra ones and such. You might not have the high potions, etc. Yeah. So it shifts all over the place in your stock. That's why sometimes I'm a little bit slow with the items. Yeah, where normally you like in your spear runs, you know exactly what your inputs are, exactly what you want to do. Here it's more like, hey, you're yeah. kind of, you see what it is. We're putting in Peter Pan at this point because Donald would potentially use fire on Hook, and that causes Hook to kind of go haywire. <laughs> you just we really died. don't want that to happen. Yeah, you don't want that. We're getting Simba here, but he's not strong enough to kill all these enemies and with one roar, so we're going to stun them with the first one. Then we're going to kill the first wave and then stun 
the next. Yeah. Now look at that top right uh, section of your screen of the UI. Look at how much longer Simba's bar is than like some of the other summons we've seen so far. That's because now we have the Spellbinder Keyblade adding more MP, and then we ha uh, also have those that cheer on Goofy. Oh, I think Peter Pan killed one of those. Yeah, I kind of hope they do usually. Yep. Picked oh, up a high potion. <laughs> Little quirky thing there is that you've got this third wave of Heartless. They don't spawn unless Sora is on the ship. So he needs to make sure he kills them over there. And there's the usage of gravity to really easily take out that uh, that ship with the stop as well. And it looks like Peter Pan took out the other guys, so that worked out pretty well. Yeah, they, they need to Hands help Hands the man, dude. <laughs> All right, so now we're actually going to be walking back into here. This is a safety stride you can use because if you die to hook, you actually have to then end up doing that heartless fight again. Um, but if you room save effectively here, then you won't have, you'll just spawn at hook again. Yeah, I don't know how many people are aware that you can just dip out of some boss fights. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I it's am not feeling this. <laughs> it's a surprising number of them you could do it to. Uh, right. Giving all his party members a bunch of potions, just safety to. I don't need potions elsewhere yeah. in the run other than here. Uh, so it's interesting to note there also, he's going out this door to be at the top of Hook. Oh, I forgot that. Customized right stop. in front of him. I'll, uh, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <We're laughs> you are about to get a talking to Hook. All right. <laughs> Let's try this again. So I'm going to let you talk about this as well, because this is more a beginner mode strat at the first half. Yeah, so you want to try to keep him in this stop loop for a really long time, where you're going to use stop in the air and have just enough time to do uh, a full combo in the air before you can do another stop. If he ever lets Hook break out, Hook is kind of random in what moves he will use. He just stopped the battleship there as well, which is really good because the battleship is the worst part of this fight normally. Oh, oh okay. yeah, let's so stay away from now that. Now Hook uh, kind of broke out, so he has to be a little careful to be able to kind of put him back into it. But instead, now he's going to go and use Dumbo. Yo, it's Dumbo time. Again, got that aerial finish. Had to confirm that before going into it. And now Dumbo's just going to spray him with some water. When he can find him. Uh -oh. oh, dude, he's a basketball player. All right. So <laughs> this is my favorite. He's right up in there. Dumbo, Dumbo does not care right now, dude. Ordinarily, he tried, those, those attacks, uh, Hook is invulnerable during. And they're kind of obnoxious to parry and everything. So Dumbo giving you invulnerability makes it really nice. Again, you see Hook, as soon as he comes out of the stop, Ooh, starts dodge. taking that damage. So now he's uh, more or less invulnerable right now. You can get little chip damage in maybe, but not You're mainly much. just defending yourself with those swings. So a few more stop loops. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I so those missiles those... are from that battleship. Yeah, and I don't think those were healing missiles. The battleship can heal Hook. That was a they healing missile. Did. Oh, oh, but it didn't yeah, matter, I think, I, think it hit, I think it hit Peter. Yo, Peter took that in the back. Maybe? What a boss. I, I, there's no way he would have died right yeah, there. Yeah, I think important. that healing missile might have hit one of the allies or got Or potentially maybe coming out. out of stop that those hits were finally landing, maybe? Something weird know. happened there, but it was a good fight. He died. That it, was sick. It I could be care. a lot better than that, but it's hard to control that fight at all, yeah. so mm -hmm. I'll take it rather even than dying the, randomly. Even <laughs> all the categories where you try to kind of stumlock it the whole time, that fight can still go a little haywire. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to get the Flare G here because I have it already. Yeah. Yeah, other categories you would normally see him go pick up a chest. And the Haste 2G would be even later on. So the fact that he was able to get both of those <laughs> in pretty much the middle of the run saved a lot of time for him all throughout these gummy missions. But with that, uh, we are going to be heading back to uh, Traverse Town one more time now that we beat Neverland. That was the last kind of just straight up Disney themed world. And then we can head to the end game portion of this. Uh, this is having a pretty solid run so far, but uh, it's going to get a lot harder at the end. So let's kick it over to Nick uh, and get ourselves some more donations as we work through this. Yeah, we have a ton, so I'm going to try and blow through as many as I can as fast as I can. Awesome. We have a $30 donation from Ghost Wheel, who just says, time to back the right horse. Uh, not sure who that is, but... <laughs> he didn't want to admit to it, dude. <laughs> we have a $10 donation saying, Ashley here responding to her boyfriend saying hi to me through his donation earlier. I love you, Michael. Thanks for getting me into speedruns and telling me my favorite game is being run. You're good. Hi, Michael. <laughs> We have a $100 donation from Cyclops Boy, who just says, Cheers, Spike, and Biscuit. We have a $100 donation from Lingomaniac88. 
says a close friend of mine who also speedruns KH introduced me to Kingdom Hearts late last year and I've been loving what I've been seeing so far. I'm also really amazed by what speedrunners are capable of doing in this game and even more so when I tried doing some of these myself. All I have to say is summons are awesome. We have a $10 donation from Ravine92, who says, hey. been a fan for several years. Hi, and thanks to everyone at the event, the tech crew, runners, and chat. I feel bad that I missed a lot of this week. Also, where is Spike Vegeta? I can hear him, but I don't see him. <laughs> hey, you can see my head pretty clearly, dude. I am pasty up here. Afro. Oh, there it is, man. yeah. What? I, I thought oh, I wow! Oh. I was like, game crash! <laughs> Way I, to scare I'm, everyone. I definitely accidentally hit the PS button, I think. <laughs> what do you mean you think? Of course that's what happened. I have to assume, right? <laughs> wow, man. I just saw blue pop up, and I was like, dang. That was that a good run, That would have been the most had. awkward place possible, though. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. Just generally rolling away from Sid. Nah, man, we can't handle this. So yeah, now we have access to the next world, Hollow Bastion, the first kind of non-Disney. Well, not the first, but the bigger non-Disney themed oh, world. This opening is scary. And, uh, Look yes. at how fast he's blazing through this. <laughs> if, it, if, if you had just like the base gummy ship and you had all this armor and everything, you'd be going way slower. Yo, Nick, give me the best, your best dramatic reading of the next uh, donation because of how terrifying this is right now. Give me your movie trailer reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of sick, but I'll do uh, I'll do what I can. We're all sick. I hope it's the most go mundane donation. Go for it. We have twenty dollars from Critical Sid, who says, <laughs> "Wanted to donate ten bucks for every hooks ship miss, but you got lucky, so I'm just gonna pretend you missed twice." <laughs> <laughs> Putting the money to Ven in BBS. P.S. I don't know why you go all the way to Traverse Town to talk to Sid. I'm right here behind the couch, man. <laughs> <laughs> he spells it with an I. Come on. <laughs> that was great. All right, you could do regular donation. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $25 donation from Anonymous who says, Good luck with hook shit biz and let's this go to the best girl, Aqua. We have a $25 donation from Arcane Ace saying, Hey, hype for getting hook ship and not channeling the power of mist. Watched the level one run last year and enjoying this run as well. Currently going through my own 2FM level one run and dying everywhere. Biz, you are a god at Kingdom Hearts. All right, well, uh, we got a little bit of platforming here at the beginning of Hall of Bastion. Uh, Nick, I do want to see if you can check out the bid war and give us an update in a little bit after we uh, kind of explain some stuff here so we can kind of see who's uh, still winning on that. But, yeah, we get some platforming at the beginning here. What's weird is that some of the platforming on some of your uh, visit state Hall of Bastion used to be more difficult than it is now. But with the 60 FPS change, it's actually a lot easier now, which is uh, mm, pretty like nice. To catch the cycle of that ice platforming moving up and down is a lot easier on PS4. Yeah, this he, is an unusually long load screen for this version. <laughs> yeah, the, he floated into the load screen there, and this is that cutscene where uh, Sora realizes that he's been holding on to Riku's keys for the whole time, you know, his car keys, and he hands it back to him. So now he's back to a sword, and uh, we can't really do any damage with physical hits anymore. Which, we weren't really doing much damage with physical hits. Right, anyways. I was about to say, I don't think it's much of a downgrade now that we'll be using the wooden sword. <laughs> Only took uh, Beast's ethers there. We're finally at the point where we're stocked up enough on potions to where he didn't bother stealing them from him. Yeah. So we're just immediately going to fall back down because uh, we can't get into the front door of Hollow Bastion without uh, messing with some stuff down here. We're going to be doing some puzzles down here. Listen to the music and listen to Nick give us an update on the, that BBS bid war. Yeah, we have actually got to the point where right now all three characters are within five dollars. What? Us. Oh Dear my! God. You people are amazing. Please keep. If you it have happening. money, guys, you can decide what this idiot's about to have to play in a little bit. The coordination that like thousands of random people on the internet right. are having right now is insane. Let's keep it going. Ben was at sixty-five. Yeah, yeah. sixty-five dollars at the start of this. Okay, yeah. sorry, Nick. Go no, ahead. that's fine. That means that Ventus alone has raised eight hundred dollars since the start wow. of this run. Wow. Right now, Aqua is winning with eight hundred thirty dollars and sixty-nine cents. Terra in second with eight hundred twenty-six dollars and seventy-seven cents, and Ventus has eight hundred twenty-five dollars <laughs> and twenty-five cents. Wow. I just <laughs> saw the numbers go up. <laughs> That's insane. Thank you, everybody, for your generosity. Nami, definitely appreciate 
appreciates it. It's a great cause, and let's keep making it happen for that bid war. Yo, Adam, who do you want? You see some singles, man. You, yeah. can, you can choose this if you want. Hold on, quick. I got some cash. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got some singles? Who brought it tonight? All right, let's go. All right, the next thing to note kind of here is uh, he has to fight one defender in this underground area in order to be able to unlock the switch because of that red command menu, blue command menu thing we talked about before. He's going to dump all his MP into gravity. And then hopefully, hopefully Beast, Beast will get two hits in here. Oh, oh Beast did wow. something. There we go. Yeah, like, Beast got hit, so he used a potion. <laughs> <laughs> he had a, he took a boo boo. Keep fighting. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, All right. Uh, physics I'm glitch here. I'm going to pop out of the bubble. It's a PS4 thing. Yeah, Wait, you already I'm already on there. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> All right. I, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of just weird things you'll see, like, again, with the physics on and just 60 FPS on PS4. Things will just move faster than they're supposed to. So Yeah, As, uh, he's going to touch a save point on his way out of this room to refill his MP, but we got time for probably, like, two more donations right now. Yeah. We got time for about two more donations right now. Yeah. <laughs> we have $40 from Alexander, who says, best boy, Ben Percent. So he, he just broke that, uh, that close race, but <laughs> it's still really close. We have $100 from Neon Elephant, who did not leave a comment, but thank you for the donation. We have $25 from Darklink Reborn saying, Hey, uh, in honor of the greatest cutscene in all of Kingdom Hearts, this $25 goes to the Aqua category and Birth by Sleep. Spike knows what's up. <laughs> oh, man, it's hilarious. He's still so getting a little trouble there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why is, why uh, is this still red? I don't know. Beast uh, is messing with something. Unless there's a dark ball hiding. There's probably one hiding somewhere. Uh, I just have to try like, the kind of wait again. this out. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, uh, okay. Uh -oh. I was like, is there Beast somehow yeah. messing this up? So this kind of goes to show why <laughs> these despawn strats we oh, come up right. with are so important. It's, you can't activate these things when you have a red command menu. It's level awful. one, it's super bad if they actually come at you because yeah. I don't really have many tools to try to get rid of them. So Riku 1 is debatably, honestly, just the worst fight in <laughs> Hollow Bastion 1. As amazing some of these fights are, Riku 1 just can't be that consistent because after every third hit, he has an auto counter. So what this is going to try to do is get in aerial combos that with the properties of just the swing, this kind of horizontal slash of his finisher, will hopefully deflect and he won't have to cure afterwards by taking damage. The other thing is that all of our damage comes from magic right now, and Riku is actually immune to magic. So yeah. in the... Uh, in the Riku 2 fight, he'll even retaliate if you try to use magic uh, using a Dark Faraga. So we really don't want to even bother trying. Man. Goofy and Donald can also steal your hits in this fight towards that three hit counter. So you can make it a little awkward for him to try to get him uh, in this like, he could, little mini game. He could tell he was going to try to, he was going to jump there. So he tried to hit him out of the air, but it's really hard. You, in general, while Don and Goofy have all those potions and Don has access to cure, you don't want to rely on them. You still want to jump and cure immediately. Okay. It's just if he notices immediately. Glad he got off the stairs there, because that's where things start to get a little more risky. Now both the party members are dead, so they can't mess things up. They also can't help with your reflex. Uh, so he has to really hope that all of these finishers reflect. And uh, he broke it a little early there. Uh, so you, you can see what the property hey, dies. There we go. That's not a that bad fight. That was not a bad fight for Riku 1. It's pretty much a luck if I get that parry. I don't yeah. like really do anything unique to it, try to get it. It's luck. so specific with the spacing uh, between kind of how far away from him you are, how high above him you are, and where, where in the animation. Yeah, yeah, where in the animations of your swings and his uh, staggers he is. So it, it's effectively random. Yeah, yeah, and you can't really control where Sora swings his finisher. So yeah. it's a little rough. So here uh, we're just going to be going up through the library, just getting the basic books. It's just two books you have to put in to be able to get out of here. And then we're going to be doing a emblem puzzle. A uh, bunch of little things you're doing there, like lighting torches, moving statues. Nothing terribly interesting. So I'm sure Nick would be honored to read your donations right now. Keep them coming in. Yeah, we have a $100 donation from Anonymous. who says, hey, y'all, I'm really happy to see such a wonderful project with great strides to make our world better through video games, of all things. I'd like my donation to go to whomever the crowd votes for. If that is too much to ask, then the underdog is fine with me. All right, crowd. <laughs> you got to have some Terra fan in here. I you, know, you know what? I heard Powexel say Terra, and he kind of runs the event. So <laughs> why, don't, why don't we go with that one? <laughs> 
Good job, audience. Yeah. yeah. yeah good, good job, audience. Yes. <laughs> we have a $25 donation from Riley Masters. Says, hi, Biz, Spike, and Hobbs. You guys are really amazing. This is run from last year's RPG LB was the first speed run I ever saw. Hobbs was second. Sorry. <laughs> I've been I'm okay with that because I was part of both of those runs, and I think yeah. mine was second. So <laughs> <laughs> it was, just so you know. But yeah, anyways. I think he meant like second chronologically. Oh. <laughs> but also, I, also it was sexiness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been planning on attempting speedrunning myself soon since KH is my favorite series of all time. Have a great rest of the run and safe travels. Rip Sean Palmer. I know, dude. man. I Rip I, Sean yeah. Palmer. It's the same speed. <laughs> Rip Sean Palmer. So, you, so if, do it. If it's the same speed, you do the swaggier. Whatever, Nick, just go. <laughs> I'll, I do things that are like five seconds slower, but darn do I look cool. Go on. <laughs> we have a $25 donation from Brightroot who says, Kingdom Hearts has always been one of my favorite games. I should be asleep, but I want to see these sick plays by Biscuit and that amazing couch commentary. And then that BBS playthrough. <laughs> That will be sick as well. Yes. Let's just first make that yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a $30 donation from Anonymous. I think this is Wider Night. It says, hey, everyone, Wider here. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Hey, uh, glad I can catch the KH runs, which are always fun to watch. Put this towards the Ventus runs as a shout out to all fellow underdog story fans. Again, we're doing another despawn here. You might have noticed Biz waited there for just a few seconds, like two seconds at the beginning, because it just kind of manipulates where those wyverns are going to be, those enemies. Now he's just going to slowly glide all the yeah. way over here and activate this. He it's, wanted the wyvern to target the party members, because if he dodge rolled forward, it would have targeted him. Mm -hmm. And it's a little slower than the most optimal uh, despawn you can do there, but we've all now been picking up haste 2G over there a lot and found that it's really consistent going over there. So yeah, that's kind of what Biz likes to stick with. Yep. So in this elevator, about halfway across, we are going to get one fight. <laughs> That's um, what I always do here, too. <laughs> the biggest thing, you it's just going to be three of these wizard enemies, which are very dangerous enemies that also can have this long. It's not technically, it's not in invincibility they have, but it's very dangerous. So again, he wants to make sure that he doesn't use any aerial finishes. He just wants to use those one twos to keep them close. And they're very resistant to magic as well. And once again, any enemy that is not Vulnerable to magic is a bad. Fr oh, no. whoa, nice! That no cool ether, ether drop. drop. I'll take it. But yeah, any any enemy that uh, yeah. is not yeah. vulnerable really sucks. <laughs> he's, he's doing okay in this one. <laughs> <laughs> he's just accepting that sword's <laughs> that close to his face right now. We gotta have a talk, dog. Now, when I give you those ethers, you throw them at me. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up to the first use of uh, Dumbo in a non-combat manner, right after he picks up a blue Trinity here with two cottages and this a Megalixer. This is the elixir. best Trinity in the game. It's you the, get two cottages amazing. and a Mega Elixir. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, but we're going to be using Dumbo in a non-traditional manner in a little bit in order to skip through, uh, s just skip kind of these long walking and puzzle sections. Uh, he'll be actually summoning Dumbo, which you can only do if you're in a fight. So first getting into a fight, summoning Dumbo, and then going as high as possible and dismissing some Dumbo in such a way that uh, Sora will flip off of him and grab a ledge. But yeah. first, because I forgot, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of categories in this game. <laughs> He's going to go get this item, uh, which is the Royal Crown, right? right? Yep. Yeah, the Royal Crown, <laughs> which is going to give him plus two more MP. Yeah. So. so we're starting to hit that threshold of being able to actually do a lot of damage with our magic uh, just due to how the crazy amount of MP we have, even though we haven't leveled up and gotten an MP from a stat boost right. ever. All right, so here comes the first Dumbo skip. This is definitely harder than it looks. Going to do a couple of dodge rolls, pull out Dumbo. He's then again going to uh, send him over there and then hopefully dismiss him in a way It's going to flip him up. Let's see if he's able yeah. to execute here. He can be sniped by the uh, the wyverns here, or potentially a wizard. But uh, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> and that Donald wyvern, him, dude, so. he was not happy about that Dumbo usage. Having right. Donald heal him there was actually pretty nice, so he didn't have to worry about MP. Usage. He usually will if he has MP there. He yeah. knows. <laughs> he knows. He knows what I'll do to. <laughs> you have to give him the talk in that elevator. It was goofy. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up on the boss rush of Hollow Bastion 1. We had this entire long climbing section. Now we've got Maleficent, Dragon Maleficent, and Riku 2. Um, Maleficent, we're going to be, uh, after both performance, we're going to be utilizing Genie. And if I'm not mistaken, are we never changing our equipment again for the rest of the run? Are we just yeah, World no, Crown and Ray of Light? Yeah. Yeah. We're effectively a mage setup. 
So ordinarily, you don't want to do finishers on Maleficent, but in this specific case, we want to use that damage storage again, uh, storing that multiplier from that finisher in order to make Genie do a lot more damage to Maleficent, because Maleficent otherwise is an insanely scary fight. Yeah, she can spawn enemies, she can spawn literal meteors to rain down and kill you. She has lightning. Um, you have to cast, stop does not last long on her. So you'll notice here, he's gonna be popping another elixir and then getting off another stop immediately. Kind of two stops for each. If Genie's doing good damage, she should be close to death. Trying to keep her locked over there. Genie, please. Uh, the last one, no. Oh, no. Oh, wait, okay, yeah, I forgot. Again, okay. oh, there it was, okay. I knew she was close. Again, that damage is very random because there is this pool of attacks that Genie can pull from. You got one more of theirs, you can hear. Um, <laughs> that was him dismissing, but whatever. Oh, it was, oh, okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the funny thing is, normally, in, in a lot of the other runs, you'll actually use... Uh, you'll use stop on Dragon Maleficent instead of yes. regular Maleficent. Uh, but we don't use as many stops in Dragon Maleficent uh, as we do in regular Maleficent on level one. He also put on cheer there from Donald because that's where you get it after beating Maleficent. Right. So now both Donald and Goofy have the cheer ability. Again, not affecting how large the meter is for your summon gauge, but just how slowly it will tick so down. Still do that first stop, and then it's going to be summoning Genie again. After that aerial finisher again, so it can be applied to this. And then I believe he'll be doing one more stop, maybe not, but uh, and then he'll be able to actually manipulate her movements pretty soon. Yeah, by moving around the lefts, or just moving around one of the sides, it'll keep her moving to tr so she can try to look at you. And that will keep her stuck there. Instead of so much like lifting her head up in the air or spawning fireballs, you're just gonna try to just make you look the entire way. Yeah, and so we do still use some of those stops in order to make sure that Genie's damage is all landing and not whiffing. Uh, Genie threw in a stop himself. Yeah, there. it's nice to see, you like to see like one stop from him and then and then not yeah. again at the end after the contest. Right? But it's really nice to not. Uh -oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so that damage was really kill her. Low. This is a little scary now. Um, this now, is uh, the most dangerous attack she could be using right now, really, is spawning fire. So yeah. he has to kind of just run away. He's and, probably uh, almost dead. Yeah, he was hoping to get away with not using an item in this fight, which is why he was so, using so few um, stops. But what is going How much? Yeah, I don't know. Genie suck. <laughs> Again, his damage is so random. That's why he will be, for all intents and purposes, replaced late in the run. So now he just has to avoid this fire. Just die, dragon thing. Wow. Um, this is unbelievable that she's not dead. Just, just die. We get it. Okay. okay. Go. Golly. I, I can't honestly explain why Genie did so bad. He probably just chose really bad attacks the whole time, and you have no control yeah. over that. If you see an HP bar with Genie, like on regular Proud or anything, it'll be like tick, 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 chunk, tick, tick, yeah. chunk. Like, it'll just be whatever it wants to be. Chunk, 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 tick, tick, tick. So. Uh, so we just got the fire glow there, which will be a lot better than Genie later on. Yeah, um, it's our last summon gem that we're going to worry about in yeah. this run, and that it contains uh, Mushu. Mushu which, uh, as Spike said, will be a lot better than Genie, but we won't worry about that just now because we're going to be heading into Riku 2, or the Riku Ansem fight. And this is one that is pretty notoriously difficult in the original version. You for, probably uh, you probably memorized the cutscene going yep. into this after hearing it for hours. Hey, I don't know about you, but you're, or I don't know about someone else, but you're never taking sword or carries. I botched it. Let's just watch the fight. <laughs> you are awful. Just talk <laughs> about the fight. We're dude. all sick. I'm blaming the sickness. Yeah, so you do air combos in this fight, so I'm going to let you explain this. Yeah, so the main uh, point of this fight is that there's really kind of two phases to Riku here. There's this first phase where he's going to try to loop him by doing four hit combos. You know, one hit and then a three hit combo. But uh, he can't always loop him like this in this first phase. Riku will just break out and do that dash attack, and it's a bad time. However, once he gets him low enough, uh, Riku will actually power up, and then he can potentially do a consistent loop. So until then, we're just going to see him try to dodge these uh, retaliations and cure whenever necessary, like now. Yeah, and he then does, once we, go ahead. Well, he does know based on when uh, Riku says come, it normally uh, he's baiting out an attack. So he runs next to him because he knows Riku's going to jump away. 
He's getting pretty close to being in the power-up phase now. It's, yeah, it isn't 100% set when he's going to start doing it. You can get him low. He's probably already pretty far in his health bar. Here's the power-up phase now. So if we could see his health bar, we would know whether he's in DM range or not. Oh. Unfortunately, this is a really easy fight the to die on. The camera didn't work with me there on that one. Yeah. <laughs> It, That's, one thing we didn't really uh, yeah. mention is that you're when you're locked on to something, you have zero control over your camera in terms of the right analog stick. Yeah, All, it's only based on you know your movements in relation to your uh, locked on enemy and uh, the walls of the arena right. and stuff like that. So really unfortunate there. It does make it really hard to see. First death went over two hours in level yeah. one without a death, though, so I'm sure Pretty nothing insane. too upsetting there. But we're going to be trying it again. Again, it is important to note that this loop, to actually get him stuck in the loop, is a pretty tiny frame window. Yeah. It is not an easy thing to pull off. Whenever he does that spin, you know, ballerina spin retaliation, that's what we want to happen, and that's what will happen every time in the uh, power-up phase. Mm -hmm. After that happens, he can move Sora to the side, and as soon as Sora takes a step, he can uh, know that's my yeah. visual cue to try to attack him again. The timing was actually slightly changed. All right, so now we're already version. in the second phase here. Got in there a lot faster this time. It's just kind of random. The timing being slightly changed in the PS4 version made this a bit harder for a lot of people, and unfortunately there he, uh, he carried over a hit from the earlier phase, so that's kind of what happened. All right, so now hopefully he'll never uh, use his desperation move, which is uh, which makes turns the screen all dark and makes him go invulnerable. All right. Okay. All right, Rick, you need to work. Uh, uh, he's being a little early with some of these hits. <laughs> okay, welcome to the darkness. You're usually what? safe there if you go out. So I guess he's still not quite in the DM phase. Riku does have quite a bit of health here. But this is why air combos are risky, because you have to deal with those. Yeah. yeah. If you want to make this fight a lot easier, you use ground combos, but they are quite a bit slower. And considering how many combos you're having to do here in the loop, you're losing a bunch of time on level one. Yeah. Again, that first hit after the retaliation is what is forcing him to get staggered instead of using his desperation move, his DM. Next combo. I'm calling there, it. there it is. All right. <laughs> like, like Spike said, getting two hours without a death is insane to begin with. So yeah. dying there is really not. Let's not pat him on the back too much, though. He's got a lot of game yeah. left to play. I mean, that's usually, if anything, I would die to, like, uh, probably, like, anti -Sor, not anti or right. Hook or something, or Halloween Town. That's usually yeah. actually now where I die, but mm. it happens. As hard as that fight is, casually. Know. It's just, like I said, sometimes the camera will pop up. It is like a thing about level one that you have your fights that more commonly will kill you. Pot, Centipede, Tiger Head, Hook. But any fight can kill you if it wants to. It's, it's amazing Absolutely. he survived the Dragon Maleficent fight, uh, considering GD did the worst damage in the history of this video game. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, with that, uh, shouts to Albert. We got him uh, couch commentating with us as well. He hasn't given us much, but uh, he's adorable. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be just jumping down. You're supposed to like get down into the main lobby, and the fastest way to do it is just jump off the side of the building. Yeah. Um, until right here, where we just kind of go through it. Uh, with here, we're gonna be going back to Traverse Town Four. We're gonna be getting our last summon of the game, turning that uh, Dragon Shine or whatever it's called, or Fire Glow, Fire Glow into Mushu. I can't remember the name. Dragon Shine. I don't know. It sounded <laughs> awesome, didn't it? It sounded lame. <laughs> Anyways, um, but uh, yeah, as we go through that, Nick, let's get in uh, one more big pot of donations. Again, guys, that bid war, it's coming up right after this. Yeah. And we do some optional bosses. So. Yeah, and I'll give you guys an update on that bid war right quick bosses. before I get to some more donations. Right now, Aqua has $1,016.69. Oh, wow. Ventus has $1,000 even and 25 cents. Oh, and Terra has $926. Oh, oh, so Terra, let's go, man. Terra. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Wexel <laughs> knew. <laughs> <laughs> like, he needed that hundo, going. man. And a few of those donations that help boost that so much. We had a $100 donation nice. from Sunal, who just said Aqua is best girl. And a $100 donation from Anonymous, who just says go Ventus. So we've had a couple of uh, big donors who helped push those a little bit higher. But every little bit counts when the bid war is this close. We have $25 from Roy Padinga. Greetings from Bavaria. Hope you all enjoy the time like me. Thanks for the week. We have a $125 donation from Victor, who says, need to, need to get underdog Ven over 1K, so let's do it. The cute boy should win anyway. 
real quick. Uh, that he just again went to the world map and then landed in Magician Study. PS4 made that faster, which is pretty cool. We'll be getting Mushu and then going down. Uh, we'll talk to Merlin to be able to get down to the uh, area where Kyrie is, the underground waterway, and that's where we're gonna um, later on have the broken Oathkeeper cutscene incentive. Uh, but we're not going to do it in the run because it doesn't always work right away, and we want this to still be one RTA attempt, so we don't want to have to load a save for that. But we will be doing that later. You can carry on, Nick. Yeah, so you'll get to see what it looks like normally here and why it looks well, so well, messy. Watch just right. a little. Like, okay, well, you saw where yeah, Sora was standing. Yeah. That's enough to know it's going to be different later. <laughs> I still don't know what this looks like, by the way, so I'm looking forward to it. We have a $30 donation from Essentia who says, Wyverns or Why Burns? <laughs> we have a $25 donation from Anonymous who says, Love this marathon and everything that it does. This donation goes to the best waifu, Aqua. Hey, Spike, I know this isn't RPG related, but could you do a Rayman laugh or yeah? <laughs> get, let's get this a little away from my mouth. Yeah! <laughs> Throat's real sore from the week. <laughs> All right. We have a five dollar donation from Chibi Rajian X, who says, "Good old KH. Though I'm a nobody, it'd be heartless of me not to donate during this run. Also, hi to Sid behind the couch. He's the best Sid I know." Uh, he left. <laughs> oh no. An essential left when her donation was ready. <laughs> <laughs> We've been timing these perfectly. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, uh, yeah, real quick, he just bought a bunch of ethers. I usually four. don't get four, and that's the second time in a row I've gotten it. It's weird. So pretty good on money. I we guess it's worth doing. <laughs> Keep going? Yeah, uh, we got a, a little bit of a scary-ish gummy mission coming up. Um, yeah, it's actually, there's a lot of crap on screen he's got to get by. Yeah, uh, he is going to be able to exit it about halfway through or so, uh, just due to a weird quirk in the game because it kicked you out to Traverse Town from Hall Bastion instead of you having to go there manually, it'll uh, it allow us to skip about half this gummy mission really easily. But it's pretty easy in that opening little bit he just went through before the warp to already be like at one health. Yeah. So from here, he's just got to kind of know which of the rocks are going to have health in them. And uh, just pray that all this stuff coming at him doesn't touch him. Yeah. Till then, yeah. go for it, Nick. Go for it. We have a Another $20 from Al PlayPal. Wow. Since it took two hours for you to die, I think that warrants more than just five bucks. Wow. We yeah, have a $10 nice. donation from KH Freak 358 just popping in to say good luck on the rest of the run biz and to push Ventus ahead in the bid war. Ooh. Which he actually did just jump ahead. Oh. Honestly, I'm really excited to see Ben. I know we're, I'm still loving this bid war so close, but I really do want to see Ben. I think that's, that'd be cool. We have. So say whatever you want. <laughs> He's just like, I don't know what to practice for right now. <laughs> we have a $10 donation from Tin Mullet, who says, great event. Let's make it to 100K. $25 from Anonymous, Kingdom Hearts Rules, and I look forward to what the runner can do with it. Bid goes to runner's choice. What is your choice right now, uh, Biz? We should probably update uh, that since yeah. it was Ven for all of us at the beginning. Well, if Ven's ahead, I guess put it towards Aqua. Oh, all right. Man. Put so it towards Aqua for Viz. <laughs> Runner's choice. All right, so we have our second trip here through Hollow Bastion. Because it uh, kicked us out for story reasons, um, we actually have to re-climb up, and we'll have to do a couple of fights as we go up. And Biz, what is your reason for keeping your default party here instead of adding Beast in like a lot of the other categories would? Uh, Beast just doesn't really add anything to level one. Okay, mm. so At that this point, magic. his damage is low as well. And that magic we get from Donald. I also need a good old Dolan to revive uh, Goofy later on. Yeah. Uh, okay, you got yeah. that cycle. If, I think if you're incredibly fast, you could skip that ledge grab just yeah. really, but it's right, hard with the for our, elixir, though. Time for our second usage of Gamba. I'll lead, let you lead those through this. Yeah, uh, he's going to dodge roll forward a couple times and spawn some enemies so that he can summon Dumbo, because, again, you can only do that in a fight. Dodge roll away, and hopefully the Red Nocturne's despawn. Uh, so there's only one wizard left, ideally. He's going to rise up with Dumbo and dismiss and grab this ledge. He actually waited a little bit there just to be sure he wasn't going to get hit by that attack from the wizard. And uh, it sounds like there were no red nocturnes there, so once he glides all the way over here, he should get a blue command menu shortly and be good to go. There it is. And Goofy made it as well. Good job. Buddy. So <laughs> that skips 
having to go back through uh, the library and everything, and it just and well, then having to fight any heartless really yeah. over this. We wouldn't even despawn. have to go through yeah. the library if we're not picking up the Divine Rose Keyblade, but it's just slow. It's much nicer to be able to just do it with Dumbo. Uh, this used to be a very terrifying fight on level one because Air Soldiers uh, with a, a one of the uh, yellow operas and then a wizard in the middle, but we have a better way to deal with it now that's consistent. How new is this Simba strat? It's not really that new. It's just when I used to run this years ago, I didn't use Simba here, and now I I'm like, wow, why didn't I use Since Simba you come here? Back. Again, this category has gone through so many changes. Oh, Ooh, that was close. But now everything's stunned, so he should be pretty good. Usually it doesn't do that. That's very rare. Oh, no, is that another, another e no. no, it was a potion. That must have been the air soldier. Yeah, I got excited. I, I thought the wizard dropped I don't know why Dolan threw a blizzard there, by the way. He does that Shh. all the time. Like, I don't, I don't get it. He usually does it before the summon and not, like, I think like he thinks after. the crystal is an enemy? Yeah, because you're mashing triangle to examine it, and uh, so, like, sometimes <laughs> he just gets confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Donald has a lot of nightmare problems, so. Well, he does die a lot. <laughs> that is true. So it's most of this run sleeping. All right. Anyways, moving up we go. We're going to be doing another, uh, the same style of Dumbo skip coming up. Um, there's going to be more enemies on screen that he's going to have to deal with. And what these two Dumbo skips, the first and the third one he's doing, skips over, is there are these two platforms you normally have to lower, um, which if you weren't using Dumbo, you'd have to do the one on the other side, because then you could have flown around and not have to use the other half of the platform. But the game wants you to kill all these enemies, hit activate these crystals, and then be able to get up to where Maleficent was and the rest of Hollow Bastion. So, but instead, we skip all of that. Dumbo 3 is, uh, some to some people it's the scariest, but to a lot of people it's the most consistent. Um, here, he's just going to quickly, as before, dismiss it, get grab that ledge. There's no wizard there this time to snipe him, so it works out a lot better. Five now we're here. all the way back where we were, finally. <laughs> we can touch the save point to get all our MP back, and then go fight the only boss that's left here, which is the Behemoth fight. Now, the Behemoth is this is the first time we're going to be seeing it, but not the last. However, this, uh, this is an actual boss fight, and later on we'll be seeing the Behemoth as a regular Heartless, more or less. That's going to affect some of the strats he'll do, so try to pay attention a little bit to kind of what he does here and look for those later behemoths to see how it varies because uh, you're not going to see much gravity at all in this fight, um, or really any at all, but in some of the later ones, you'll definitely be seeing a lot of it. Yeah, one's, I forget, which one's the, because they're the arch behemoth. Is this the arch behemoth? No, this is the behemoth. This is just the behemoth, and then they, get, they become arch behemoths yes. after that. Again, getting in that finisher so he can store that multiplier. And then that will now be applied to Genie, and he should hopefully do better than his last performance because yeah. he was kind of lackluster, I'm not going to lie. We would use Mushu, except that for some reason the horn is invulnerable to fire, and Mushu kind of counts as fire. So. Where Mushu will, like, he doesn't pull from this pool of attacks he could do. He just shoots it in the face. Yeah. So. The gravities he's using right now aren't doing the full percentage effect that they normally would have because this is a boss and not just a regular Heartless. But it does still do some damage, especially with that uh, damage storage affecting it. So that's why Biz throws him out while he has some time. He, of course, left himself with enough MP to be able to cure, though, just in case something happened. He can and jump and deflect that very nice. That's it's one pretty of those hard pretty to much do. real will hang on. To. So if he doesn't die very shortly, that means Genie was really bad. Yeah. But it's hard to tell. There's no scan. So we got that knockdown. Hopefully uh -oh. on his well, platforming, man. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I'm guessing Genie didn't do very well. So he tried to dodge roll the lightning there. If you're uh, really precise about your timing, you can make it happen. But sometimes you just okay. roll into another That was like uh, lightning. Eh. That was eh. Yeah, <laughs> could be better. Genie I'm not going to clap because I'm not mad at Biz. I'm mad at Genie right yeah, now. These last two performances <laughs> have been rough. Yeah. We only have two more usages of him in the run. Because um, after that, again, once they're not uh, once they're not invulnerable to fire, we're going to be yeah. switching over to Mushu full time. 
with that, uh, we have an unskippable cutscene that is a cutscene that we cannot skip because it is unskippable. So. Yeah, what do you usually say, Biz? <laughs> Definitely not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to wait for it to play. It's all part of the meme. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll wait a moment, and then when he says I'll try to thing, do the best I can with my voice. <laughs> when he says this thing, do donations. I cannot skip this cutscene because this cutscene is an unskippable cutscene that I cannot skip because it is unskippable. No <laughs> there we go. Let's is anyone confused? <laughs> Speaking of, we have a $25 donation from Inland Loki. Hey, Biz, how come you're not skipping this cutscene? <laughs> but seriously, good luck during this run. Really love your streams and hopefully get to see some Terra action in Birth by Sleep. Sora. That we have. <laughs> We have a $20 donation from Selim, who says Aqua's the only way to go. $20 from Armitzel. RPGs were my childhood. Thanks for the great stat explanations, and I am enjoying the speed. We have $200 from Green Boots. Because we see Aqua run every time BBS is featured, let's bump Terra up for variety. Great run so far, Biz. Let's see world record. Remember, I was <laughs> wrong during the pre-show. Adam wants to do Ven the least. <laughs> he does. He likes the Ven run the least. So let's do that. Let's one. do oh, that. One. There we go. <laughs> yeah, crazy. We've already seen over three thousand dollars there. It's probably important to figure to point out. Probably that bid war will be cut off once Biz is done with all of the content here, which yeah. you know, will be this game, Kurt Ziza, Sephiroth, and showing off that weird glitch. Yeah. And then probably at that point, we're gonna have to decide who it is. So don't try to hold on too long to snipe it. Because you might not get your donation in time. I wanted to point one thing out that I forgot to point out. Um, not super important, but I thought I'd mention it, which is um, this game does have a problem of dropped sound effects. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to mention that Biz has had a problem where you know how important it is to land the finisher for damage storage. Yep. He yeah. didn't know he landed a finisher <laughs> fighting Behemoth, and he <laughs> didn't know if he got damage storage. Because they so dropped the sound that effect. Sound Casual effect. players were saying that's not a problem, but it does. It's, it's pretty silly. It's weird because it didn't exist on that PS3 version, but the port giveth and the port taketh away, so. Yeah. So again, if you're patching stuff, Square, <laughs> that's another thing you can throw on the pile, I'm just saying. <laughs> Scary end of this gummy mission here, but... You know what? Let's do it one more time, Nick. Yeah, give we'll, me that dramatic we'll give, reading. We'll, we'll give you an update on that bid war again. Right now, or Terra. That, okay. give, give me a dramatic update. <laughs> Terra has retaken the lead <laughs> with $1,200, $1,206.77. Ventus is sitting at $1,120 and Aqua at $1,061. So all three characters have raised over $1,000. Wow. That's awesome. Let's clap for that. Yeah. For that. Someone's going to raise over $1,000 and lose. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. Keep up the generosity, folks, and remember to vote for Ventus. Sometimes <laughs> the music here doesn't play at, the, at first. I don't know why. It's only in this version. <laughs> so weird. All right. So now one of the worst enemies in the game, aside from Shadows, and that is Invisibles. He, His first uh, goal is to pull okay. them all into the back. They here. don't all usually come yeah. together. <laughs> There's nothing scary. crazily cons What? Oh, my God. That was amazing. That was disgusting. <laughs> Hobbs has left the building. Also, I'm like one tiny hit short of two MP here, so I gotta throw in ether. Dude, you got that wizard drop earlier. That's fine. You bought an extra one. Because again, because he's uh, short the two MP, uh, he wants to actually summon Simba in the start to blow up these angel stars. Uh, another really, I know you're still I'm fuming still mad. about that. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, yeah, that shouldn't affect it. That's probably uh, They might hopefully. hit me. Yeah. If they hit him, the fight's basically over, at I least could, in terms of If, it, if I get hit, I could try to death abuse, but I might try to stop kill them. But Yeah. So now he's going to hopefully get off this full charge, and hopefully the Angel Stars will just be a little nice to him. It's got to go all the way. Oh. Mama! Nice. Oh. They were all okay. nice. They uh, they yeah. did the charge up instead of, like, kind of immediately trying to attack. He was about one second away from just dead. Because, again, yeah. Simba needs to charge up all that way in order to be used. Yeah. Picked up another elixir there, which is nice. It's important to also note that we're talking about, like, all these summons and the EXP zero storage. Simba actually isn't affected at all. 
you can use Simba to that extent in casual play without EXP zero. It's just, again, based off of how big his meter is. Yeah. The longer you charge it, the stronger the roar will be, the, the higher level Heartless and enemies he'll be able to blow up. And it's, uh, it, it's more of like an exponential effect. So if he only does two ticks, that's uh, nowhere near the amount of damage he'll do with, uh, with a maximum charge. Now, as Hobbs was talking about earlier, we got regular behemoths. We're going to be doing this percentage damage a lot, seeing a lot of yeah. gravity here. He's going to go ahead and wait for this orb attack. He's going to hopefully jump up and be able to deflect it. Unfortunately, he was not able to get it there. He's just going to go in now. Donald helped him out there. They're all dying. <laughs> Unfortunately, he needs his party members alive. Come on, Donald. Right. You're always going to revive Donald first, because he should revive Goofy. Uh, and then you can go render, because again, in order to use your summon, you have to have two other party members, and they need to be alive, in addition to needing MP. Uh, I believe Genie only needs two MP in order to be summoned, so. Yeah. All right, now Genie hopefully can redeem himself here. Just blow up. We luckily also dealt a lot more damage with those gravities earlier on because this isn't the boss, like Spike was saying. So. You might have noticed Biz actually cut off that usage of Genie a little early because the Behemoth has iframes from the time he starts to stand up to a few seconds after he's fully stood up. So he was just trying to cut off Genie a little bit early there. Uh -oh. to get is he with it? On, well, he's bit. hitting him in the eyes, yeah, which yeah. is not. He's only vulnerable on the on the horn. That's not great. It's because I don't have an ether here because I don't want to waste uh, any more than I've already wasted. So I'm being safe. It might seem like all right. He's in the final dungeon. Why is he still being so conservative? There we go. He's been picking there up the go. elixirs and mega elixirs and all these ethers and everything. There's still a lot of usage of them through the end of the run. So not the worst idea to be a little bit conservative there. Yeah, yeah. we're getting pretty close to the scariest fight in the run uh, and you know the longest heartly, heartless battle. Um, and so really being able to have a lot of items for that and a lot of the other troublesome fights is really a good idea. So coming up here, we're going to have a bunch of portals. Kiwi, do you want to explain just what the portals are? Uh, if you didn't... To my understanding, if you need to beat the world, then you have to complete the portal. Right. Yeah. Each and, portal uh, is a corresponding world. So worlds that we didn't beat include, like, Olympus. We didn't beat, we didn't beat Atlantis. So we're going to be forced to do those portals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we haven't beaten 100 Acre Woods, so we'll be going there as well. Yeah, for some reason, you always have to go to the 100 Acre Wood yeah, portal. But matter. the nice thing is, it gives you an uh, Mega Elixir, right? <laughs> right. And it's so Surprisingly, there are no enemies in the 100 yeah. Acre Woods. Or in the other mini game. Oh, that yeah. would have been terrible. Just kill the pacing right here. Yeah. I'm going to summon Simba here and hopefully not get the slight chance that we can get hit before we get the charge off. Yeah, it's like 99.9% .9 consistent well, that if he does this uh, two-tick hit. Yeah, the current strat, fine. the two-tick will avoid that. That's why we started yeah. doing that, because the old strat, we would randomly get hit. Yeah. So if you so want to, we ticks, always say ticks. Bam. Look at the end of Source Keyblade. One, two, three, four. Yeah. But that's the ticks we're talking about that determines how good the roar is. Those first two ticks uh, hit all the enemies but didn't stun them, but it reset their attack patterns, which gave them enough time to get a full charge off. Then two more full charges killed the last two waves. Now I get to see how I'm doing on ethers. Oh, Despite having motion. three okay. full waves of Dangerous Heartless, that's actually one of the most I'm consistent right. fights in the game, which is pretty cool. I should be, like, okay on ethers now. And skipping past all these pink portals, worlds he successfully locked the keyhole for. Now the only time we're going to be going to Atlantica. Um, he's going to have uh, two waves of Heartless here. He's going to have these three squid-like enemies. Uh, you want to make sure you kill them like this, otherwise they might break into like four smaller squids, and you don't want to see that. So just spam Fyraga. Yeah, six Fyragas on each one, and then a gravity on each of the Aqua Tanks and uh, fire spam for the rest of them. Again, using that, those MP recharging uh, abil or, uh, items, rather. For some reason, there's some weird mechanic in these last few fights where I don't get sent to one HP in one hit, but that's about to go away back to getting two-shotted. It's kind of as the game goes, both in cage one and two, and maybe the other things as well, I'm not sure, but uh, it kind of scales you in chunks of the game, uh, probably based on just the world itself you're in. Uh, the very next fight, I really dislike it because I have no consistent strat for it. It kills me at random. Yeah. Invisibles are the main antagonist of End of the World. They uh, they really are incredibly random. 
They can give you amazingly good fights like the one Biz had earlier, or they can give you terrible fights that just kill you right away. So he just throws out gravities and hopes they all just kind of walk into it. They weren't. Uh, one of them back there, you can see, is DMing. Two of them now. Yeah, two actually, of them maybe are. even three. No, two. Yeah, two, yeah. Yeah, two. He killed two of them Yeah, there. so while that sword is in the ground, they're invulnerable, um, and they will do that ring of fire type attack. Uh, they do a lot of damage with each of those swipes, but again, this is level one. Everything does a lot of damage. Oh. So now he has to be careful. Both his party members are dead, so he's not going to get any free cures. Had to get that deflect. Yeah, this is a lot scarier when two of them are still alive. That's so he's able to survive well taken that. care of. Now he's got two more visibles here. That clank is actually intentional to just time out that gravity to where it will actually deal damage. It's not going to whip. He knew that other one was going to dash at him, so that's why he jumped there. And now it gets a little scary. Here he is. He has to finish them off since he has no MP. And he has hit each of them with the gravity, so they've taken a lot of damage, but not quite enough yet. You can lock onto the oh, chest they as both you died. saw, okay, which sick. is scary. Actually, that was yeah. a good fight. If either of those had killed him, he goes back outside that portal and he has to fight all six of those invisibles yeah. again. Invisibles and really all the enemies that enter the world are really where you start to see how a runner adapts to the different RNG that they get, uh, yep. the different randomness that the enemies come. So now we get to use Mushu, and you're going to see why Mushu is a better genie. Comes in, gets it, lands uh, okay. somewhere. Oh, 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 that's not good. Yeah, that's there yeah, that's, that's now really going to kill Donald and Goofy. He's got his ether there so he can revive them. Again, it's you trying to, okay, that you was... have to be on the ground to actually use a summon. So what he was trying to do there was get off that aerial finisher and then land like on his on arms, arms on the as yeah. they were crossed. Uh, unfortunately, and once again, we've been saying this a lot, feels like on PS4, just the physics are a little messed up and you slide off easier. But now he's bringing up Mushu, and if you saw Hellfire right now, we are cutting through that sucker, because now it's just consistent damage. This is normally a really long fight in any category that doesn't use Mushu, but... There now we it's go. Already yeah. over. Good job, Mushu. Yeah. And again, and good recovery on Biz's part after that unfortunate slip. Just to be completely clear, this is not just Mushu. Mushu's not like this broken and everybody missed it when they played it casually. This is a weird quirk with that EXP zero ability that he used that finisher, it stored some kind of multiplier or damage, and applies that to every single hit that Mushu is dealing. One interesting thing to note here is that, again, you're seeing because you're on level one, you never get any item slot upgrades, yeah. item slot or accessory oh, upgrades. So okay. he can only fit three items onto Sora. So he gives himself an elixir and two mega elixirs, which is absolutely nothing for this next fight, which is the scariest fight in the game, yeah. and then the final fight. Yeah, this is the absolute worst fight of the game. Yeah. They waste the most time to die, too, if you die in the last wave, too. Yeah, there's going to be this final arch behemoth we have to fight right here. And then we're going to have seven straight waves of Heartless. He's going to get in as much gravity as he can right there, or at least a little bit of gravity, holding on to some MP. Now he's going to revive Donald, who should revive Goofy, and then we're going to get Genie out. Who should revive Goofy, and then we're going to get Genie out. Who should revive Goofy, and then we're going to get Genie out. Okay, there <laughs> okay. we go. He does that sometimes. Okay. Uh, I haven't never had Dolan die before reviving him, though. <laughs> now, the weird thing is, like, now that we've got Genie out, like this behemoth we're not too worried about, right? The rest of this fight... Hopefully we shouldn't at least die. It yes. might take a while, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. On the PS3 version, uh, you could actually open the menu after this fight. The command menu went blue, you could open the menu, and you could use a cottage or any other item you wanted from the menu. However, on the PS4 version, the game loads so fast that to open that menu is actually like one frame perfect, or we think yeah, uh, frame perfect weird. input. So it's not consistent at all, and thus we uh, we actually threw a megalixer there. Yeah, we actually threw the megalixer there and have to rely on just those three item slots instead of being able to equip more things. Now we have to survive. The, the, again, this is the scariest, hardest part of the entire run. First wave, we got a bunch of dark balls. We're going to be pulling out Mushu here. Alternatively, you could use a Fyraga strat, where you just stand still and you spam and kill all of them with like two or three Fyragas. Well, he actually wants to do this to get Donald and Goofy off the field. And that's because he's going to hold Mushu on his head until the invisibles start popping in. So first up, we're going to see Mushu here. A little more intended usage. He's going to get rid of all these enemies. Gotcha. Okay, so here go the dark balls. Yeah, Switching this is what Mushu's meant for casually. He's pretty good at taking out uh, individual targets. No real damage storage being applied here. For the now he's still going to hold on to Mushu until the Invisibles are in right here. Dismiss them. That should bring all the Invisibles in here, which beautifully got all of them towards Sora, not at Donald and Goofy. 
you've now got this glorious look right here where he's got them all stopped and he's just throwing on gravities as many as he can. Luckily, Goofy's being really good and about throwing a lot of ethers right now. we've got two invisibles left. He's going to go ahead and stop, stop them. He needs to make sure that Goofy and Donald are alive because he needs to get Simba out right after this. He's going to hold his Mega Elixir until he confirms they're both dead. Or now, close to Or it. close to it. And they should be blowing up now. Now, as soon as he sees the angel yeah. stars, he's pulling out Simba. So you guys might be familiar. Go ahead. Dude. This is a little risky because I had to throw that early because they didn't die to gravity. So I only have one Mega Elixir left. Yeah. Again, very few resources, having only having three items there. Now, Simba, you've got waves three through six that he's going to be able to take out with his roar, by, with a fully charged roar. Would yeah. you get the jump on them because you're summoning him as they're coming in? Unfortunately, there is seven waves in this fight. There's one more coming up after you're done with Simba. You're going to have a couple of invisibles, angel stars, and a bunch of dark balls. We're going to start out as soon as they're dead. We're going to, there's going to be an invisible on the left side of the screen to the left of Sora. We're going to throw down two gravities on him, throw up a mega elixir, and then immediately summon Dumbo. So throw up those gravities. Throw the Mega Elixir to confirm they're both alive, and you've got a lot of MP there Ooh. on top of him right now. Yeah. And now he's on Dumbo. He has iframes while he's on Dumbo, so he can't be hurt. Dumbo is mainly used right here just to kill the Dark Balls, just to get a couple of these enemies off screen, because otherwise you get sniped by everything. Yeah, it's not going to take out everybody. He's trying to get these Dark Balls out and uh, trying to deal some damage to some of the other enemies. Mm -hmm. Now he has no iframes once he falls off of Dumbo, so he wants to make sure he's in a safe position before he despawns him, or before he gets off. Yeah, so waiting for the... Yeah, oh, jeez. Unfortunately, geez. he just got away from an attack right there. Now we need to use some stops. We need to get some gravities out. We need to get rid of these. We got one Angel Star and yeah. two Invisibles. You might left. think that the Invisibles right. are the harder... Or the, oh, Whoa! Nice. That's oh, nice. They're kind of oh. invincible That's at the moment not too, good, being in the stash. Because now he's going to clank on everything if he just throws you them just out. you just get an Ether Drop? Yeah. Wow. He got an Ether Drop, and uh, okay, that Okay, one is alive. All right, so he should be fine now, hopefully. And there Oh, is. baby, back. there we go. That was the one fight that I did not want to die to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that like is, a four-minute death. I, I think know, it's more like six. Yeah, it's it's, it's mm, insane. It depends. Yeah, yeah, it depends on where you die. I don't know Yo, why thank you for picking up that. that. <laughs> you know everyone home is like, please pick it yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have to go fight Kurt now. Yep. Okay, so, yeah. Be, thank you all for donating because we're going to be fulfilling the first donation incentive of fighting Kurt Ziza here, which is a uh, a boss, an optional boss in Agrabah. I believe the boss is unlocked after you beat Riku 2, right? Uh, okay. uh, as are most of the optional I'll bosses in this there, game. I'll believe you there, and uh, there's an interesting story I just found out about today oh, <laughs> about, really? you about the naming of Kurt Ziza. Yeah, Kurt Ziza was actually named uh, from a contest, right? Yeah, somebody won a contest through Square, and they were like, all right, we'll name a boss after you. All right, I'm only going into this with a Mega Potion. If this goes as it should, that's all I should need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little so, risky, but I can always die to redo it again if I have to. I mean, this fight boss. is crazy difficult, you know, casually. And even in speedruns, it's me. really easy to die, too. Uh, but for some reason, with the XP Zero scaling, a lot of the optional bosses will kill you in three hits instead of two. And on top of that, once he breaks these orbs, he's going to be able to use that damage storage technique we've been talking about to uh, and grab a summon to be able to do a lot of damage very quickly. Uh, I'm going to let him do his thing. Yeah, and that Mega Potion, just to keep Donald and Goofy alive so we can utilize Mushu. He couldn't cure right now because his magic was sealed by those two orbs that he was destroying. Now he did one finisher there and uh, immediately summoned Mushu. This is a bad angle, so... It, you have to do this really fast to pull this off, but uh, I do have a backup if it fails, as long as I'm close to killing him. Yeah, even though Mushu's consistent, his head's going to be moving around a lot. So it's kind of, you'll have a lot of random hits just with. Hopefully Mushu getting a lot of good damage right there, keeping that head still, liking it. I think he might have whiffed uh, one or two. Yeah, yeah. All right. that was still pretty good, though. So ideally you could kill him during that. But he was able to use a lot of Mushu damage on the shield there. Yeah. And uh, Dumbo, now we're talking improv strats. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I mean, this this is the best. Yeah. If this doesn't work, then I probably have to die. <laughs> yeah. You have to use magic to break that barrier or Dumbo's water. So hopefully that's going right. to break the barrier. There we yeah. go. Remember how you only use Tinkerbell casually?
Yeah. <laughs> that's, and that's like the only one we don't use in this. Tinkerbell is the very safe way on level one to deal with it, but it's not very fast, so that's why I only pitched it doing that. <laughs> I just meant in general. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> You have to summon her at the very opening of the fight, though, because it gets sealed immediately if you're going to do that. So we'll be doing Sephiroth later on its own file because of the one MP restriction that uh, Biz put on it. But Kurt Caesar, we were able to actually do straight up with the yeah. speed run, you know. Just uh, in the route. Yeah, the speed you run would also setup. We would have to do about an hour of extra content or more to actually unlock yeah. Sephiroth. So... All right, in we go. We've got a lot of fights here. Now, you might be sitting here thinking, like, okay, well, okay, I kind of get it. Like, we've been using summons all the way throughout. Here's how they take that away from you. Donald and Goofy, after this next fight, are going to be gone. Yeah. So, you better enjoy Mushu right here, because then we're not going to be able to use them until the very final fight. And if you guys know Kingdom Hearts casually, there are eight. They like to go all out for the final bosses. we got basically 11 fights right here that we're going to have to go through. First up, Ansem 1. I know you hate this dude. Yeah, so Ansem 1 is a really rough fight in... Uh the beginner mode speed run. Can, ooh, does that clank affect Yeah, it, it should count. Okay, all right. Um, so you got the finisher he clanked, which sometimes can mess with the damage storage, but Biz was confident, so I'm confident too. Let's go. Yeah. Again, Mushu's our bro, and he's going to hopefully take him out no problem, whereas in beginner, it's a little more rough. Uh, the terrain is really awful, and Ansem likes to float around everywhere. The big attack we're looking for here, because it is still a little bit dangerous, is him to use his Destructo Discs, as we call them. Cheater Discs. <laughs> um, but he wasn't using them there, so there good job, go. Mushu. All right, good job, Mushu. But now, all of a sudden, we're going to have to get a little more creative. We can't now use our summons because they're going to take Donald and Goofy away from us. First up, we've got Dark Side 3, that guy that was really easy at the beginning of the game. Now, all of a sudden, he's a little bit more of a threat. Um, although they've been able to work out some strategies to make him a little bit more yep. manageable. Doing his last menuing right here, giving out a bunch of Mega Elixirs and Elixirs to his party. Mainly Mega Elixirs to go do to Goofy and Donald. Because if you give them, give them just solo Elixirs, usually they'll just use it on themselves. And yeah. it's better to have them, obviously, Mega Elixir and everybody's getting benefit. And as Spike said, they take away your party members here, but they also give them back one by one. You get yeah. Goofy first and then Donald. So you can actually kind of time out when they'll use those Mega Elixirs, hopefully. He moves up a little bit here, because as you can see, Fyraga's kind of slowly pushing Sora further and further back. And at this angle, the way Fyraga locks on, it's kind of cool how much it is able to angle up and still get to him. Now, once he punches into the ground, we're going to be doing the best strat. Climb up the arm, smack him in the face. Sound effects. <laughs> yeah. A lot of sound effects gets dropped in this. And there we nice. go. All right, nice. Good job. Now, the thing is, we might see this nerd again, because now we have to fight Ansem 2. If Ansem 2 kills you, it's going to kick you back out before that fight. And this is one of the coolest, most technical fights in the game. So you don't want to really get yeah. Lightning there. Lightning's the worst attack we could really see him use, because uh, he is... He, he's very prone to spamming lightning if he uses it once, mm -hmm. and you can't really hit him during it. Yeah. He doesn't have guard, so you had to attack parry that attack, which is why you'll see him move to the center of the stage a lot of the times so when he's not sure what move he'll use next. Yeah, it's kind of just like the purest fight in this game almost because it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. Yeah. Almost all these hits can kill you very easily. Obviously, we're two shotting at this point. So he's just got to be able to react to all the different attacks, get in his hits when he can, move to the side, moving around, a lot of movement involved in general. And Ansem isn't immune to magic. I believe he is somewhat resistant. But on top of that, we would leave ourselves way too wide open for attack if he were trying to do some of the, you know, spamming Fyraga strats like he did on Dark Side. He's getting a lot of staggers here. We're getting closer. Okay. So this is his DM or his desperation move, which we use in the Kingdom Hearts community to describe when they're in this kind of invincibility phase that generally just wastes a lot of time. Generally, we're going to try to find ways to cut these out. Because as you can see, it's just a lot of animation where you can't do it. We're going to hope that this is the only time we see it in this fight. But at level one, yeah. it's basically random because normally we would use scan to be able to tell where his HP is in order to try to stop him from using that move. Ooh, that is submit, the submit move. Which, that is the scary side. Basically, if he yeah. gets hit by that, he's going to die because he doesn't have access to, like, Ars Arcana or anything. Or Leaf Bracer. Or Leaf yeah. Bracer. He only has three elixirs, again, in his inventory, and he doesn't want to use them on this fight. He's going to use up two of those three elixirs on the very next fight. He doesn't want to waste them. All right, so, All right, so we're going to see the second time. It's pretty much random on level one. Yeah. One thing that would 
also be nice if you had scan with being able to see where his health bar is. Yeah, so you skipping, kind of feel out when it's going to happen. Skipping the DM is based on his health, but also based on the patterns that Ansem uses. So being able to not control the patterns he uses and not see his health makes it very random. So because we've seen two DMs, that means he is close. It is possible for him to get a third one, but hopefully we won't see that. Getting away from that submit, dodge rolling at the last second. Very timely dodge rolls um, there to use those, that little bit of invincibility that dodge Come on, I don't want you. a third DM. I don't want a third DM. Uh, uh, he's going to charge now, maybe? Okay, hit him here. Yeah. yeah. That is probably the most just straight up most technical fight in the run. Yeah. I would say it's the most fun. That is one of the most fun It's pretty for most fun, runners. but it is terrifying. It, yeah. yeah. It, it's the, one of the biggest walls for learning any Kingdom Hearts uh, or any KH1 category yeah. uh, for a speed run, but it's really cool. Now Handsome we're going to go back to using our magic after uh, landing a finisher again for that damage storage. The nice thing about ending Ansem 1 with, you know, or Ansem 2 rather, with a lot of physical attacks is you got to build up that orange gauge in the MP on the bottom right all the way to the top, so he gets to use a lot of Fyragas here before having to worry about using using an item. He can predict his pattern pretty well. He knew those two lasers were going to come up. Lasers are the worst thing about this fight, so you want to avoid them as much as possible. Yeah. You're also noticing right there, he could have potentially gotten in a few more fires. He is sandbagging his damage just a little bit in order to get him to use another series of attacks. He flew away there from those six lasers and made sure that those three Heartless that just spawned despawn because they were just far enough away. Now, hopefully he's already gotten in his sandbags that he needed. At this point, he's just gonna fire till he's dead, hopefully. If he doesn't kill him fast enough, like if too many of these Fyragas whip, if he didn't space it out properly on this health bar he cannot see, um, then he's pretty much going to die because lasers are just going to come out effectively nonstop. Yeah, it gets Get in really face. He's scary about to bring end. out the lasers. We need him to die now, like now, like probably now. There, there we go. We go. Very mash intensive fight, so very you know hard on the thumbs and everything. But now we got our least favorite enemy in the game once again, shadows. Yeah, and they're actually scary on oh, level one. They like hello, still will two shot you. Because <laughs> they're like, like it's anything else, you're gonna get two shot. So he's gonna be throwing down some gravities just to flatten these idiots, bring down their health quite. So a I bit. forgot to change my customize yeah. from Kurt, but I should be okay. I was like, dude, Thunder made a comeback. I think it'll, yeah, it should carry your magic menu all, through all these fights, so hopefully it'll be okay. Ordinarily, you would have gravity customized, but now he has to work on the fly to make sure that he's actually jumping in the air, then hitting down on the D-pad to move down to magic and X twice to use gravity instead of normally just L1 square or L1 yeah. triangle. Also important to know there, he got a Mega Potion drop, which is actually really nice for the final fight. Because um, now, again, he wants to keep his party members alive so he can bring out a summon. So he can throw that instead of having to use up like an elixir or something, or having to cure them. And so, here's where we're likely yeah. going to see our first <laughs> death abuse intentionally. Um, because normally, like Spike said before, you only have three item slots. Normally you'd have a lot more. So he had to use you know, up all of those items on Ansem 3 and he needs his MP back. Just so happens when you take a death, you get your your MP and HP both fully refunded instead of being reverted to what they were when you started the fight. Which that's such a fast death abuse. It's 100% oh, right. worth it. Sure. Because <laughs> the only way you're really going to be doing damage to all of these is by using a lot of gravity and fire spam. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, jeez. Oh. It's all right. Force. So... A little bit of MP usage he didn't want there, but hopefully. All right, so that laser is okay. always going to follow him out, so he has to be careful to time that that dodge of swords. They're not really giving me a fair chance to get in there. Yeah. Yeah, the this blue is lasers from the smaller. Uh, ooh, wow. The blue lasers from the smaller artillery on the sides are actually the worrisome part of this fight. The big, you know, orbs from the middle only happen when you get nearby, so they're really not as big of a deal. Yeah, this is where it's like, this fight wasn't for level one, man. There's yeah. just, you only have so much to work with. This, I would uh, consider this a top five worst fight yeah. on level one, for sure. He took out the two middle ones, so now he can at least try to take out these two sides individually. He is still needing to use gravity here, because despite the fact that these things look tiny, they actually have a lot of health. And again, it's still very dangerous to be anywhere near them. Yeah, the wing attack of sorts that he's using, um, it will uh, knock you, you away if oh, man. <laughs> it'll knock you away if you're kind of far away. But if you're close, it will also deal damage. The wing will hit you. All right. All right. So five enemies left. 
This is an absolutely awful fight. It's still really easy to get sniped at the end of this fight, so he has to play this super carefully. And he's also making sure to save 1 to 2 MP at all times for those cures. Because yeah. otherwise, it'd be way too easy to die. Three Flakes left, are another left. problem in this fight. Nope. <laughs> I'm never going to remember that. Oh, now he doesn't have MP for cure, but there's only two of them left. Now he's got yeah, that MP nice. back, so he's okay. He delayed that slightly just so he could get that laser deflected. And doing a little right. bit of damage onto the... Come on, dude. Uh -oh. You're the last man standing. Oh, my God. So he has to come down, dodge this laser. All right. Before he could put off that cure. Yeah, Clank, Again, Clank's, on the bottom baby. this thing is uh, awful. Clank's for days. Oh, just there okay. it is. Okay. All right, so now I'm safe from having to redo that. I do have to death the Unless he dies next, right here. Well, yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> he needs to make sure he gets in that portal. All right, we got in the portal. <laughs> right. So because he doesn't have any MP items, really, and uh, and everything, and he wants to save Goofy's Megalixir yeah. until later when he's already used a bunch of magic, he wants to go ahead and take another quick death. This is another. You're like in the. You're in the room with like 20 of these dark balls. Oh, it might okay, not look like it's quite a few. Anyway. So now he's gonna try to get off some uh, gravities, and it might be a he little. He thought bit about it, up. but they yeah. spread around too quickly. While uh, he, the fact that he has to menu gravity out of the magic menu is insane right now. It's very difficult. On to do. level one, pretty much the best strat we have right here is just kind of pulling them all in a circle around the room, and just jumping and shooting some fires. It takes, I think, three fire ragas to kill each of them. Yep. So, yeah, it's just, this is another rough fight that's just not really for level one. Again, it's amazing how far this category has come over the years when there was so much, like we were talking about stuff like Clayton earlier, uh, where you just kind of have to play it really slow. Um, this is still some of the few fights that it would be nice if there was some sort of strategy, but you just don't have that many tools on level one from being on level one. Right. He's doing a good job of dodging though, because this is this fight's normally a lot scarier than this he's right, making nice. it look right now. Brought Goofy back just to throw that Mega Elixir. Once he got really low, it is nice that they drop a lot of MP bubbles as well. Yeah, and they do have the potential to drop those Mega Ethers, which could potentially be a little bit helpful. Yeah, it looks like unfortunately he didn't get any drops. Wow, there, which not is a single Mega Ether. Pretty That's rare. I'm used to getting like four on beginner. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing I'd be worried about gravity is final invisibles, but I should be okay because gravity is pretty close to stop. If if you die is when it might be the problem. All right, so we got well, four fights left. Anyway. Four <laughs> well, fights know, left. We got Dat Face right here, as we all call him in our splits. So you're only going to be seeing him use, for the most part, just one twos, kind of saving the finishers based on just like timing. It's actually a relatively predictable fight. You see these vertical lasers that come okay. down. He knows pretty much when they're going to start coming down, so he can start to dodge away. Also, those single lasers that he just moves away. Like right here, we know he's going to use that, and then he's going to use it again. Yeah, face telegraphs his moves via the squinting or the moving up and down of his head, mm -hmm. that, those kinds of uh, tells. And uh, it is a fairly scripted fight in terms of the patterns he uses. Obviously, utilizing Fyraga when he's out away from it, because that's going to be more damage anyways. <laughs> Again, it's a lot of it is just moving side to side on him to stay away from those constant lasers shooting out. Again, another place where he knew he was going to use the doubles there. Pretty soon we should be getting into the second phase of that phase where he's going to lean up and start doing that big, like, for lack of a better term, just like that face explosion. Yeah. And once again, another thing he, like, pretty easily telegraphs right there. That <gasps> oh, was nice. pretty close oh. to it. <laughs> So, oh, all right, lasers for days. If he had like landed on the bottom of the face there or something by uh, accident, I think I have to do been something dead. unique here to avoid dying. I have to despawn those. Yeah, go. unfortunately, when those guys pop up, it's the most annoying because you really don't see them coming. They just yeah. snipe you from below. They will kill you. <laughs> so we should be at probably under about a bar of health right now. Oh, wow, I hit. <laughs> Yeah. Staying that close yeah. is really, really scary. You kind of learn, as long as you're not just straight up touching him, then it's usually not going to actually hurt you. Should be getting pretty close. Just has to avoid a few more. The second phase can almost be more consistent because he's not doing as many of those vertical lasers. I need to waste a lot of MP, actually. He's wasting it here because he wants the Mega Elixir from Do you Donald. want to put it back on gravity? Yes. 
Well, it's on stop first, and not gravity. Yeah. But you are going to do stop, okay. Yeah. Um, because they're more likely to throw stuff like Mega Elixirs at you based on percentage of MP or HP you have left. So because you're a lot lower, it's more likely he's going to throw it. So, so. terrifying fight here, and if he dies, it gets a lot worse. So we're going to hope he doesn't so die. So we're kind of yeah, yeah. pulling them all to the back like that very first Invisible Spike, and now we're going to thunder them first. Oh, but we're going to gravity. Again, having to menu his gravity from the command menu on the fly is really scary here. Only, like, the top runners can even really deal with this as a backup. Oh. Each of those lasers, I... Ah, this is, uh... This, now it's gonna get real scary. Yeah, good dodge roll away from that to have the iframes get out of that. Ooh. Unfortunately, there's, like, five of them alive right uh, now. This is very this low is odds. This is problematic. And what's terrible about this fight is if he does die, it's going to load the Invisibles in before he really gets a chance to oh. move. Oh, so he's got a... Oh, oh my gosh, dude. I had to get like way too lucky to pull this off. Oh man. Again, using those few iframes he has. Okay. There are so there many are of them so alive many. right now. I don't think any died. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That was, honestly, that was amazing even lasted that long. Yeah. That's basically impossible if that happens. So. Again, a lot of this is just because we don't have gravity hotkeyed. So now, all right. So now he's got to. Uh, so it canceled his stop. So right pretty there. much, yeah. I get death cycled until I get a stop off. Yeah, this is what is terrible about this fight is not only does it reset your position in the magic command menu uh, when you take a death, but also you start Oops. spawn in the fight and the okay. invisibles are already moving instead of normally waiting a moment. Oh. Yeah. So once again, we're just not getting our gravities off, and it's just not killing them again. None died again. Yeah. yeah. So this is, it is the last barrier on this run, and it, they can do whatever they, they had want. Had to put it right at the end. Yeah. 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 That was again. <laughs> if none of them die, it almost just doesn't matter. You hope that they're either gonna blow up in ten seconds, or it's gonna take five minutes, and you still might not win. Okay, he got his stop off cleanly. Stopped them again to make sure the rest of them came over and just give you more time. All right, so now this is there. looking better. Blow up, blow up, blow up. Oh, Blowing wow. up again, nice. getting an elixir, elixir drop. Okay. And that's what the fight should All look right. like. All I kind of right. wish I got that elixir on the other attempts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah if you got that elixir on the first attempt, you might have <laughs> might have been able to clutch it out. That's why yeah. customize is important, but yeah. normally we don't fight Kurt in the run, so usually we always have gravity there, I've already said. <laughs> Well, they didn't go ridiculous enough in these final bots, so they threw in one more fight. You gotta fight this core right here. Again, don't lightning. Go up. Up, yeah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> gravity, gravity. Uh, sure. Don't die to this guy. Well, normally you wanna use three uh, gravities here, but yeah, it should be fine. fine. Okay. Final fight, Ansem 4. And guess what? All this crap we had to deal with, we have two party members back with oh, us. Oh, yeah, I have the elixir, that's right. <clears throat> I don't have the death abuse here for being too low on MP. All right, so he's going to go up. He's going to have to counterclockwise or clockwise, whichever. Just go around and dodge these five sets of lasers. Once the five lasers are over, he's safe to move in, get his damage storage, and then get safe. So he's going to get off a few combos here just so he'll die a few frames. Yeah, this is, this is a safe portion right now. So he just made sure he landed a finisher. Now he's going to hide while Ansem is pushing you back normally. <laughs> he wants you to get sucked in, which obviously, as you can see, is happening. Throws that Mega Potion, getting Donald and Goofy alive, and then bringing out Mushu. Now, this is going to look pretty funny, but he's going to try to get out from behind that, and he won't let him until that attack's over. Because <laughs> that's still going to be like trying to suck him backwards. All right, so get ready on time. Coming up here probably in the next 30 seconds. All right, Sora, I believe in you. I believe in you. Come on, <laughs> D. I believe in you. Come on. Yeah! All right, All right we're flying. So time is going to be when we see that flash from him dying. Yep. All right, so this is how upset right we are with face. the Invisibles. Mushu is shooting him. Eddie Murphy is shooting and him right in the face. Time! time. <laughs> wow, sub three, man. Sub three. So now I guess we have to jump into one of our last two incentives. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that now so I don't waste time. But as he's, he's getting into it, Nick, I want one more update on that bid war because yeah. we are coming up on We're it. We're cutting it off soon, people. Make Ventus happen. Yeah, definitely. Right now, Ventus is in the lead <gasps> with $1,315.25. Terra right behind him, $1,266. And oh, Aqua man. is at $1,086. Ooh. All right, guys, you have got this fight with, Sef with Sephiroth, which 
Biz is giving you time. Yeah. Okay, Ventus so. is also the only character. Real quick, just Ventus is also the only character who hasn't been in a marathon, I think. So, yeah, yeah. go. Okay. All right. Um, so, as you can see, I only have one winged angel on, and I have no accessories. I have only two abilities on, and I have just some items in case. <laughs> and I only have one MP. And it's I, I think it's a pretty fun challenge, because normally you could just strike right through most of his attacks without fear of ever dying. So, Biz is crazy, and I live with him, and I have to watch this challenge pretty much every day of my life. <laughs> so, I might as well commentate it, because I know it pretty well it's at fun. this point. Um, but scary. So, again, he's at 1 MP. He doesn't have many options to keep himself safe in this fight. First phase isn't too rough. Basically, um, the goal of this fight is to reset the auto counter as much as possible. Um, there's two different ways you can reach this auto counter. Depending on your combos, usually it's going to do a one, one, two, three finisher, which will be a fourth, and that'll reach his auto counter. Or if you vary your combos, like if he gets hit, he's going to want to just do three attacks to not reach the auto counter. Then on the seventh hit, then he'll reach the auto counter. I'm getting pretty lucky with those fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's bad. Normally You're usually hit. taking hit there. There we go. Usually, there we go. you get a situation. Go. Okay, so what happened there was he was stuck inside Fire Pillar, so he just tanked the second hit so he could have the iframes on Cure. Here, he's going to pop out and heal. Um, no, to know I don't have Leaf Bracer, it's just the mechanic of getting hit on yeah. the ground. He's going to pop out. Whenever you see him use leaf, leaf Bracer on the ground, that's just the iframes from the previous hit he took. It's also important to note wow. some of you might be sitting here like, oh, why is he using the best Keyblade? It makes no difference. This is not the best Keyblade. It's just to take away his MP. It's it actually cool. genuinely the worst Keyblade. It looks really cool, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It has cool fire swings. It. And you get this Keyblade from beating Sephiroth, so. Yeah. The first phase is mostly just him walking around. Some jumps, he'll get an oh, opening ooh, to right. attack. Reminder that Sephiroth's sword is very long, yeah. so no, you won't catch him. Uh, I guess he dropped that sound effect. <laughs> it happens, like we said earlier. So he should be nearing the end of phase one. So now he's going to descend Artless Angel at the opening of this phase. And now I'm going to try to keep him in some sort of reasonable pattern. And that I move, can. if he got it off, would bring him to one HP, but... And take his, and take his and, MP And away. the great amount of MP that he has. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oops. It's so oh. satisfying when he throws an elixir in this fight because he's refilling like 20 HP and uh, MP. <laughs> he can't attack him after he fire pillars because he doesn't have any safe options. Okay, here's okay. Octo Slash. Um, usually you have 2 MP and you can just use Strike Raid, which you're invincible the entire time you're using that move. And That's it's pretty awesome. free to not get hit by Octo Slash with that, but because we have 1 MP, he waits, he jumps as high as he can, and he just mashes attack so he can parry with him. And it's generally safe. Sometimes he'll get a hit off, though, but he should still be safe to cure. Octa Slash is very risky because I could just, like, rando die in this version. Yeah, he's going to jump, mash attack. Death, death, death. Oh. oh, yeah, he almost got hit there. Oh, oh. there. Okay. <laughs> he, yeah. <laughs> that was close. All right, free punish. That is the nice thing. Descent Heartless Angel casually, everybody remembers this being the scary move that took away all your health and MP. But it's actually, it leaves him very vulnerable to attack. Yeah, it's the easiest to punish. So this, this is, is the second capture. of three phases we're going through here. So he's probably at about half total health right now. Another Octa Slash, jump, smash attack. That is terrifying every time. That is amazing to watch, though, honestly. Yeah. Okay, right. He stores out that one. He's getting pretty close to the third phase now. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, there it is. The goal here is now we're in third phase. Okay, good. He wants to stagger him. Now oh. we have. Oh, uh, nope, he broke out. So now he's probably going to throw a meteor likely. out, yeah. The goal is to stagger him out of that animation and to keep him basically staggering so he can't pull this move out, but he got out. Uh, due to the 60 FPS, this move is like, crazy this fast. This is actually relatively slow. Yeah, yeah this is actually... Just, yeah, usually it's going crazy. go really fast. You, you want to dodge roll to the wall and usually dodge roll... Uh, you want to dodge roll away from the last rock close so to the wall. Now he has no MP, so he's got to charge up. Thankfully, we'll get him back pretty fast. 
but for the right. one MP you have, you want to keep it valuable. Every time he warps, he's going to attack out of it, so Viz knows to just roll once he warps. Oh, oh tried to aerial parry there. Uh, I think I'll throw an item for marathon safety. Okay. Yo, that one MP, cool 20 that. health, elixir. Yeah. Yeah. He has done this with no items, though. He can't do it. It's yeah. just we don't want to have to watch the first two phases all over again. I guess I'll use an item. <laughs> yeah, so this, wow. at this point, it's mostly just get the auto counter, roll away, and he's usually open for another, except for there. Oh. Again, it takes a lot of just knowledge of when you can roll to get those eye frames. Yay! Wow. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your generous donations. That's a really cool fight. All right, so last incentive, I guess. Uh, <laughs> oh, baby, I've never seen this. Yeah. Spike's the only one I think on the couch that hasn't seen it. So I assume we're going to cut off the uh, the bid war probably at, as setup ends or something, or maybe like during setup. So last chances to snipe it. I still want to see Ven. Adam doesn't want to see Ven. So yeah, let's make that happen. <laughs> I'm going to try but, to explain this a little bit. This only seems to work on the PS4 version because whenever you uh, dodge roll into a cutscene, there's like a weird stagger animation uh, Sora does because of physics problems, because they bumped it up to 60 yeah. FPS without fixing everything. See this if you can get it first try. Yeah, it may oh, take I don't always get attempts. this at first try, so I might have to reset a couple times. Like right there, you saw a stagger, right? Yeah. So if I do this right, Sora won't land in front of Kyrie like he's supposed to. Uh, like that, that's uh. the normal one. <laughs> The way for it to work is he needs anything. to like get he needs to be in his like swimming animation because he needs to get deep into the water for the cutscene to mess up. That's my assumption. <laughs> I don't have like absolute proof of that. <clears throat> Just giving more time for that bid war to <laughs> yeah potentially. If you've got hands. deep pockets and you love Aqua, you could snipe it. But I'm just saying, I still want to see Terra. <laughs> or a bunch of people that want to drop down twenty, thirty dollar donations right now. That's true. There. It okay, is. okay, here we go. So. Watch this cutscene. <laughs> it starts off kind of normal, right? You know, the emotional cutscene where they're reunited, right? Biz, put that controller down, just for the record. He's not touching the oh, controller. You grab the story, right? <laughs> That's right. We were together. You know what's funny? <laughs> <laughs> I don't you, but you <laughs> he doesn't have sliding dash, by the way. <laughs> it's level one, one yeah. Together, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, he is ready to protect her. That's some awesome camera work. We're not at the best part yet. When I turned the whole thing heartless. is the best part. <laughs> you saved me, remember? <laughs> I wailed on that darkness, dude. <laughs> this was a rough time in my life. <laughs> I hate going back here. <laughs> <laughs> and now, <laughs> that was Blitz, another ability he doesn't have. And the light from our hearts broke through the darkness. I saw that light. I think that's what saved me. No matter how deep the darkness, the light shines within. I guess it's more than just a fairy tale. Well, let's go. All right, so yeah, now girl. he's actually normal Why because not? they had to actually rig up because the face model and everything. So he's standing right in front of her, right? Come on, Sora. <laughs> we made it this far by sticking together. You can't go alone. Kyrie. <laughs> even if we're apart, we're not alone anymore. He's like this crazy <laughs> little hermit. <laughs> I can't help? You'd kind of be in my way. <laughs> okay. You win. <laughs> <laughs> Just floating there. It's my lucky charm. Be sure to bring it back to me. Yes. <laughs> Don't worry, I will. And it is back. The story of Mo. And now he's gone. <laughs> This is this could be considered as a really sad story for Kyrie, where she's just imagining all these Sora's <laughs> inner dreams. Don't ever forget. Wherever you go, I'm always with you. So thank you for donating. Yay! <laughs> All right, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and cut off the bid war right there. Give us third, second, first place. All right, one last refresh. Third place is... 
Oh, oh okay. He, okay. He organizes the event, dude. Yeah, All right. we, we've just been told by Puex, so we're going to set up the next game. <laughs> oh, and keep if the you want to snipe it, dude. All right, All right. So get ready. We're going to cut it off probably as Yo, soon as Yo, look at that all, number we just All hit. the levels right. are good. So see you all in a little bit right after all a bit right. of setup. Cool. All right, and while we're setting up, I think we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we will be right back. But before we take that break, Ventus right now has $1,570. Terra just jumped up to 1616 and Aqua is still sitting at 1086 So if you've been waiting to snipe, you have to do it now or else it may not get processed in time. So go ahead. We will go to a quick break and then jump right back in. All right, and welcome back. While we are setting up, I'm going to try and rapid fire as many donations as I can, as we got a ton of them towards the end of the run. We had a $25 donation from Anonymous with no comment. We had a $40 donation from Folo Kenix. Just said, H, no, 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 no. Not sure I get that inside joke, but <laughs> we had a $50 donation from Green Boots with no comment. We had a $140 donation from Anonymous who said, make history. $45 donation from Anonymous, Fun Ven Times. A $30 donation from Green Boots who says, congrats on world record for Kurt Zisa percent. Biz PS, get wrecked scrubs, it's Terra time. $250 donation from Anonymous with no comment. A $20 donation from Anonymous who said, thanks Invisibles for making me donate even more money to such a worthy cause. And actually I'm about to head, hand over the host position to Freddy as I am very tired and I need to try and get some sleep. So thank you very much. T stay tuned for the Birth by Sleep run. Hello, everybody. This is Freddy here, your host for the BBS run, coming up in just a couple minutes here. Uh, in the meantime, let's get through some of these donations. So first, we got one from Nav Machine 93 for $75. Said, had to drop by and donate the, in the game that became 
that made become official made me become officially obsessed with the game. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Go Sora, go. We have twenty-five dollars from Bid Big Stickin. Uh, good luck on your run, Biz, and thanks to all. Well, good job on your run, Biz, and thanks to all that put together this great event. It's been fun barely making it to work each morning, staying up so late to see some great games. <laughs> we got Green Boots, <laughs> the fifteen-dollar donation. He's been donating for Terra and BBS once again <laughs> because this is a speedrunning marathon. Gotta go slow. We have a $5 donation from Mist. If you see this donation while strowing, you've been vis visited by speedrunner BizKid047. Good runs and world records will come to you, but only if you type, thank Mr. BizKid047 in chat. Good job on the run, Biz, and good luck to add zero on the BBS run coming up. Keep up the great word, everyone. Work, everyone. Meanwhile, I got the couch yelling at me while they're trying to do mic checks. And <laughs> um, I will go check for, we haven't quite got enough? Okay, well, I'll keep reading chats then. Okay, well, you, this is, you got, we're gonna be cutting off the bid war for Ventus versus uh, Aqua versus Terra very soon. Uh, let me refresh to see what's winning at the moment.